Someone's voice woke up Blair. He slowly opened his eyes and everyone around him immediately burst into laughter. One of the students asked how such a stupid idiot is still studying here. Blair gets scolded again. Blair scratched his head and thought, where is he? This is a dream. The girl sitting next to him whispered that teacher Brittany was calling him again. Blair turned around and saw his teacher behind him. She leaned over and asked displeasedly, did he sleep so soundly that he already forgot where he was? Blair looked at her and thought, is this the teacher? His teacher pulled his ear and said that he knew that she couldn't sleep in her lessons. He must know how necessary mathematics is. She picked him up and told him to go answer. Blair walked up to the board and thought that he seemed to be faced with a very difficult problem. The problem on the board consisted only of single numbers that needed to be added. The teacher noticed that Blair was standing still and told him to solve this task at home. Tomorrow before class he would show it to her. This will be his punishment for sleeping in class. The children laughed and said that this idiot would not be able to solve this problem in three days. Mathematics is one of the most important sciences, such an idiot cannot have the ability to do it. Blair smiled and started writing something, and his teacher thought, is he so confident? Like a scientist rich in knowledge. Blair wrote back and the teacher thought it was impossible. Blair turned to the teacher and asked if he could go to the toilet. She allowed it and the children asked in surprise, was he able to solve the problem? He clearly wrote a random number. The teacher disagreed with the students and said that the answer was absolutely correct. Blair left the class and surprised exclamations began to sound behind him. Someone exclaimed, how can this be? Even the teacher took several hours to solve this problem. Blair thought that this wasn't even an arithmetic progression problem. He moved. He, Chen Luo, is an ordinary mathematics teacher who has completely devoted himself to this science. After graduating from university, he worked tirelessly as a teacher for many years. Next year he plans to receive a higher academic title, and at such a key moment he moved. He only took a nap during the exam, so why did he move to another world? It's not scientific. They don't live in a comic book. Maybe Newton can help him. He moved into the body of a student named Blair, but he is a complete zero in mathematics, the whole class calls him a fool. Based on the situation that just happened, in this world mathematics is highly respected as a science, but their level of knowledge is quite low. Even a student from elementary school can easily find the answer to such a problem, but in this world everyone can only add numbers one at a time. Since he can't solve the displacement problem, then he will become the best mathematician in this world. He, Chen Luo, will rise to the heights of science even in another world. Suddenly a girl came out from around the corner and they ran into each other. They both fell to the floor and Blair apologized to her, but suddenly he saw that he was hovering over her and she looked at him indignantly. Blair quickly pulled back and gave her a helping hand, then looked away and said that he didn't mean for this to happen. The girl suddenly jumped to her feet and said that it was him again. Blair pointed a finger at himself in surprise and asked, does she know him? She shouted that of course she knew him. It was he who pushed her at the entrance ceremony, because of him she ended up in this position. He embarrassed her in front of school. She remembered his face forever, but this time he specifically ambushed her. Blair looked away and thought, does he seem to be in trouble? What's happening? But wasn't she the one who crashed into him? He replied that he was not guarding her at all. Besides, wasn't she the one who bumped into him? She told him to stop, then she started making some movements with her fingers and spoke to the element of fire, telling him to listen to her order. Nothing happened and then Blair exhaled and said that she was so naive. He started waving his hands and asked, does she think she has magic? Let her look at him, ancient god of darkness. He started fooling around, and then the girl's spell worked and fire appeared in her hand. Blair stopped and then the girl attacked him, telling him to get it. Blair thought, how could he forget? Isn't magic a prerequisite for moving to another world? He just moved to another world, and they are already throwing fireballs at him, what should he do? He asked her to wait and the girl said that he was shameless, let him receive punishment. Blair thought, this means how. He bowed sharply to her and said that he was very rude. He asks her to accept his deepest apologies. He thought that a real man can always adapt. The girl stopped abruptly and chuckled questioningly, and then the fire in her hand disappeared and she said that he should not think that he could apologize and that's all. Suddenly she saw that there was no trace of him and said that he ran away so quickly. Meanwhile Blair was running around the school grounds, thinking what is wrong with this world. Do science and magic exist together? Suddenly he felt something and thought, what is it? His head is pounding. In pain, he sat down on the ground and then memories appeared in his head. Blair wept bitterly and called for his father, and the people who came to their house reported that the general had given his life for his homeland. The man handed Blair's mother a box and told her to calm her sadness. After the death of his father, Blair and his mother moved into a modest house. The people who lived there turned to them and gossiped. One woman told her friend that they said she was from an aristocratic family. Her friend asked what kind of aristocracy is here. After the death of their husband, they became so poor that they had to work. 
years passed, Joyful Blair came up to his mother and said that he had been accepted into the Shendona's academy. She said that he must study well at the academy. Blair responded by telling her not to worry, he was already an adult. His mother imagined how he would grow up and thought that he was already so old. Some days Blair spent time in the library, the old man who worked there told him not to dig around for too long. Otherwise he won't let him sleep here. Blair began reading books with the thought that he would definitely return their family to its former honor. At the academy he tried to cast a spell, but nothing worked for him and his classmates began to say that he was trying so hard but could not make a single fireball, he had no talent for magic at all. He can't even master the fireball technique. He may be from a noble family, but he is so poor that his family won't even hire him as a servant. Such a mediocre student will soon be expelled from the academy. He's also a complete idiot in mathematics, he probably didn't have a teacher in his childhood. If it weren't for the glory left by his dead father, both of them wouldn't even take him here. Let them just look at his black hair and brown eyes, he is definitely not a pureblood. All the memories came flooding back to Blair at once and at the end he heard his own words. He apologized to his parents and said that he knew nothing about mathematics or magic, he was worthless. He returned from his memories and his classmate asked what was wrong with him. Blair opened his eyes and thought, I call her Jasmine. She is from his class. How did she find him? Jasmine smiled and said that there was a lesson on magic theory downstairs. He is okay. She held out his hand and Blair replied that he was fine. He thought that he didn't think anyone would worry about him. He accepted her help and thanked her. He thought that now he understood what happened to Blair, but now he has him. After that they went to class and the teacher said that as everyone knows, there are four magical elements in the world. All magic is based on them. Blair thought that in this world people are divided into natural-born magicians and ordinary people. Both magic and science are very important. This academy is a famous magic academy. The teacher raised her hand up and said that in this world magic is based on four elements, earth, fire, wind, and water. They are the four main elements. Mages use spells and hand gestures, as well as spiritual power, to manipulate the elements. This is how magic happens. But to use magic, you need natural ability. After a while, the bell rang and the students were glad that classes were finally over. Another student said that all these old people can do is lecture from textbooks, it's so boring. The teacher had already begun to collect his textbooks, but Blair approached him and the teacher asked if he had a question again. Blair said he wanted to ask. Without natural abilities, is it really impossible to wield even a drop of magic? The teacher apologized and said that he had already asked this many times, the answer would not change. Without abilities, he cannot control magical elements. After that, other students began to laugh at him and said that their mediocre Blair was fantasizing again. He tries so hard in all his classes, but what's the point? If he doesn't have talent, it won't appear. Suddenly one boy put his hand on Blair's shoulder and said that it would be okay if he didn't graduate. By that time he will already be working on his father's estate. He pointed his finger at his classmate and said that he, Toby, would always share bread with him. Blair turned around and thought that he remembers this man, he is Blair's only friend, he seems to treat him well. Toby smiled and then said goodbye to Blair and Jasmine remained in the classroom. Blair noticed her and asked if she wanted to say something. Jasmine replied that this is not true. Blair thought that she seemed very worried about him. Jasmine quickly ran to the exit of the class and said that teacher Brittany told him to come to her office after class. He replied that he understood, he would go. He remained sitting in class and thought that she was so strange, he saw her several times today, but it was as if she always wanted to tell him something. Even though he has excellent knowledge in mathematics, but without the ability for magic in the magical world, it is simply ridiculous. An ordinary person from birth, maybe they should just try it. He began to cast a spell to summon fireballs, but nothing worked for him and he thought, and what were he waiting for? He was already upset, but suddenly flames began to appear around him, then the fire became brighter and enveloped his hand. Blair looked in surprise at the flash of fire in his hand and thought, is it a fireball? But this cannot be, because this body should not have any ability for magic. He exhaled and said that this is so cool, fireball magic. He started playing with the fireball and told it to go out and play. He raised a huge fireball above his head and thought it was a real fireball. Could it be that when he crossed space, magical channels opened in him? Suddenly he remembered that he needed to see the teacher and quickly went to her. He knocked on the door and the teacher told him to come in. Blair opened the door and asked to forgive him, but suddenly stopped short when he saw that his teacher was writing something on the table while standing and Blair called out to her. She smiled and said that he had finally come. He looked at her figure and she, sitting on a chair, told him not to pay attention, she always does calculations while standing. He replied that it was okay, he was late. Why did she call him? Brittany waved her hand towards the chair and told him to sit down. Here's a pen and paper for him, let him solve this problem. 
Blair again saw a problem in which all the numbers were added one at a time and the teacher headed to the exit from the office, said that she would leave for a while and let him decide, take his time. Blair named the answer and the teacher was very surprised, she turned around and asked what he said. Blair replied that he said that the answer to this problem was 3160. Brittany quickly came up and touched Blair on the shoulder and asked how he did it. Even she took a very long time to solve this example. Has he really already solved this example? But this cannot be, because she chose the number 79 by chance. Blair asked, does she really want to know? Brittany smiled and asked, will he tell his teacher? She's so curious. Blair responded with a glance to the side and replied that he would tell. She was happy and he thought, is the teacher such a fool by nature? After that, he scattered all the papers on her desk and said that he saw her process of solving problems. She performs calculations by adding numbers one at a time. This is not only a waste of time, but an opportunity to make a mistake. He looked at her calculations and said that she had calculated everything correctly, which was commendable. Brittany said that this is the topic of the last lesson, in this world the magic of mathematics is at a low level. But is this the only way to solve it? Brittany replied that she was wrong. He took the first one and said that this problem also has a second solution method. First you need to find a pattern. He began to write down the solutions on paper and said that the first number and the last, the second number and the penultimate, and so on, so they add them up and get 80. Let her say how many numbers that add up to get 80. Brittany suddenly raised her hand and said that she understood, there are 39 of them. Blair said that's right, she's great. Let her sit down. I suddenly remembered that she was the teacher and apologized to her, saying that it was a habit. Brittany thought, did he tell her to sit down? It is a habit. Brittany went on to explain further, saying that this changed the problem from difficult addition to easy multiplication. At the same time, they should not forget about the number without a pair, it is 40. Using this method, she will also be able to find a solution very quickly. Brittany greatly admired his solution and said that it turns out there is such a wonderful way. Moreover, it seems to her that this method can be improved further. Blair said that's right, she's great. If in a block of numbers, starting from the second, each one differs by the same number as the previous one, then they can be described by one simple formula. He wrote on paper a formula for summing an arithmetic progression and his teacher was lost in thought. Blair waved his hand in front of her eyes and called out. He thought that elementary school math from his world was so difficult for this. Brittany asked if he came up with this method himself. Blair replied that something like that would be more convenient. He thought that she still wouldn't understand if he told her Gauss's name. The teacher grabbed his hand and said he was a genius. If he continues to do this, he has a bright future ahead of him. She got too close to Blair and he called out to her. After that she quickly backed away from him and said that she was just so excited. She thought for a second and asked if he wanted to become an outstanding mathematician. Blair happily replied that he didn't want to. He wants to become an outstanding magician. Brittany tilted her head to the side and looked at him, puzzled. Then she quickly clung to him and grabbed his hand and said that he is so gifted in mathematics, this is the blessing of Minerva, he should not waste his talent. Besides, she knows that he has no ability for magic. By becoming a mathematician, he can also take a worthy position in society. In any case, he should choose mathematics, not magic. Blair threw her hand away from him and said that he still wants to become a magician. He thought that as soon as he introduced a couple of theories to this world, he would immediately become a great mathematician, and this is a fairly easy path but he will only pass off other people's discoveries as his own and transfer the fruits of great scientists into this world. And the magic in this world attracts him much more than the glory of a mathematician. Brittany asked, since he wants to become a magician so much, can he make a bet? Blair asked what bet. She replied that there would be a magic exam in a few days. This exam will finally decide whether he can stay at the academy. Blair got a little upset and said that if he didn't pass the exam, he would be expelled. Brittany said that if he really wants to become a magician, then he must pass this exam. Blair looked up at her in surprise and she, showing him the calendar, said that they would make a bet. If he passes the exam, she will no longer persuade him. If he doesn't pass, she'll help him apply for a teaching assistantship so he can stay. But he must give up magic and help her study mathematics. How's that for him? She mentally apologized to him and thought that he would definitely lose this argument due to his inability to do magic. Blair agreed, and after that he left the office and thought that she was so stubborn, she pestered him so much. He remembered how she told him not to forget about their bet and thought that he would rather do magic. Suddenly a girl jumped out from around the corner again and they collided. Blair fell to the floor and thought that this was such a familiar situation. He grabbed the girl and thought what it felt like. He suddenly opened his eyes and saw what he was grabbing. Then the girl grabbed him by the clothes and said that he was shameless. She started using fireball magic again. But at that moment Blair had already managed to hide and she shouted, where is he? Again this shameless bastard got away. 
Blair thought that if he hadn't run like that, he would have been turned to ashes by now. After a while in Brittany's office, the same girl was sitting in her office and the teacher, calling her Isabella, asked what happened. She has been unhappy since she came in. Isabella replied that she met a pervert twice at the academy today. Brittany asked if they have any perverts, but any pervert would be unlucky if he ran into her. Isabella replied that next time she would definitely shoot a fireball at him. The teacher laughed and said that this was all Isabella. Isabella threw a stack of papers on the table and said that they would not talk about it. She had already solved this problem. She only spent half an evening working on it, and she got it done quickly. She probably solves such problems even faster now. Brittany looked at her solution to the problem and said that she was great, she really solves faster than her, but Blair was able to complete the problem in just a minute. Isabella was surprised and asked how he could decide so quickly. This is impossible. What is Blair anyway? She had never heard of such a thing. Brittany smiled and said that he really only needed a minute, she had never seen such a solution. Now she will show. She showed her a piece of paper with Blair's solution and said that first she needed to figure out the pattern, the sum of these numbers, then they multiply the sum of the numbers by the logarithm, here he simplified everything into a formula. Isabella looked at his decision, and then grabbed her head and exclaimed, that means this is also possible. And this is the way this Blair came up with. The teacher confirmed her words and said that she herself was very surprised that there was such a talented mathematician in their academy. Isabella said she wanted to meet this Blair. The teacher saw her burning eyes and agreed. After that, Isabella opened the door to Blair's class with her feet and shouted, is there Blair in their group? She wants to meet him. Toby wanted to answer her something, but Blair pinched his leg and, hiding under the table, showed him a sign to be quiet. Toby awkwardly scratched the back of his head and replied that Blair had just left on business. Isabella asked, did he leave again? She headed towards the exit of the class and said that they should then tell him when she returns that she wants to talk to him, she has business with him. Toby agreed, and after that the door to the classroom closed and Blair crawled out from under the table. There was silence in the class and everyone started throwing strange looks at Blair. Blair looked around and asked his friend why they were looking at him like that. Toby grabbed him by the shoulder and told him to tell the truth. What happened to Isabella? Blair asked, Isabella, is this girl's name? Toby asked, is he really interested in anything other than books and part-time work? Does he even know who this Isabella is? Blair got scared and asked who she was. Toby asked if he even knew how many fans Isabella had. If they find out that he offended their goddess, they will not forgive him. Blair replied that this is the Shindona's Academy, they cannot do whatever they want. Toby said that at least he knows what their academy is called. Then let him tell you where their campus is. Blair asked, on Baker Avenue. Toby asked where is this avenue. Blair replied that he was in the city of Yabo. Toby sighed and said that he already thought that he was pretending to be a fool, but now he sees that he really is a fool. Isabella's father is the mayor of Yabo. Blair was surprised and thought what the hell. This is what he got himself into. He asked if he finds her and apologizes, will she forgive him? One of his classmates heard this and asked, did he dare to get into conflict with Isabella? He looks, he doesn't want to stay at the academy. Blair turned around in fear and the boy said that this was correct. Anyway, such mediocrity should not have lasted here for a couple of days. Blair thought that this guy's name was Bud. This idiot was always hurting Blair. Toby asked if he was bullying him on purpose. Blair thought that what he said was true, although in addition to magic, the academy studies mathematics, history, philosophy and more, and if he cannot become a magician, he can become a scientist and have the same respected position in society. However, in a royal level academy like the Shandanasa Academy, graduates must have at least some magical abilities. After all, all second year students will have to pass an exam, and those who do not pass will be expelled. In fact, the magic exam is quite simple, every student can pass it easily. But Blair is absolutely not endowed with the ability to magic, so for him this exam will mean the end of his studies at the academy. It's not surprising that the teacher decided to argue about passing the exam. Bud hit the table with his fist and exclaimed, is he even listening to him? He pointed his finger at Blair and said that he was an orphan mudblood. Toby rose from his seat and called out to Bud with displeasure. Then he asked, does he want to fight? Bud asked why he cares. Toby replied that Blair is his friend, and his business is his business. If he wants to fight, he will show what he is capable of. Bud replied that he would remember that. Next time they will answer him. Bud and his friends left and Blair thought that although this fat man does not seem very reliable, at such a moment he showed himself to be a loyal friend. He's a great friend. He asked if Isabella bothered him, he would help him, right? Toby smiled and replied that of course he would do it, but by then he would give it to him. The smile on Blair's face disappeared, and after that time passed, 
A few days later the magic exam came. All the students gathered on the site and the teacher said that in this exam they will test their fireball technique. Students who fail the exam cannot continue their studies at the academy. Fireball is basic magic, he thinks every student can handle this task. They will need to stand behind a line and hit the target with a fireball. They'll start with Bud. Bud stepped forward and cast a fireball spell, and then extended her hand forward and sent the fireball at the target. The teacher praised him and said that he passed the exam. Linda has passed, let the next student come up. Bud looked at Blair and said that he should enjoy his last minutes at the academy. Toby got angry and told him to shut his mouth. The teacher said Toby is next. Toby stepped forward and, extending his hand, began to cast a spell. A small ball of fire accumulated in his hands and he aimed it at the target, but the fireball did not reach the target and the teacher said that he passed. Toby was delighted and the other students said that he had conjured such a small ball, he had tried so hard. The teacher looked at the list and saw that the next player thought that he did not have the gift of magic, he would not pass the exam, he could not even create a fireball. Poor guy, he doesn't want to expose him to ridicule. He sighed and said that the entire second year passed the exam, then he declares their test over. Bud told him to wait. The teacher looked up at him and Bud told teacher Anthony that he had missed one student. He pointed his finger at Blair and said that he hadn't passed the exam yet. Blair remained silent and the teacher asked, is this how he will pass? Bud asked, he is a student at the Magic Academy and will not take the Magic exam. All Bud's friends laughed and said that this idiot would be expelled. Bud said that he can still return to the Academy, maybe he shouldn't lose face. A crowd gathered around Blair and other students headed to the spectacle. Two girls ran past teacher Brittany and said that that idiot from the fifth group was about to disgrace himself. Toby put his hand on Blair's shoulder and told him to ignore it, they were just out to make fun of him. Blair pursed his lips and said he'll try. Teacher Brittany came to a crowd of students and one of them asked what he thought he was. He doesn't have the ability for magic at all, so why disgrace himself? Another student replied that he probably still had not come to terms with the fact that he was untalented. The teacher told them all to calm down. After that he looked at Blair and said that he would ask again. Does he really want to pass the exam? Blair confirmed his words and said that he wanted to try it. The teacher nodded and said that whatever the result, he did well. Now he can begin. Blair stood in front of the target and sighed, thinking that although the spell and hand gestures were not needed, he would still do it for appearance's sake. He began to cast a spell and gesture with his hands, and after that the hot air scalded the students behind him, but the fireball did not appear and Bud took a closer look, and then he laughed and said that it was very strong. Blair finished the spell, and then a powerful fireball appeared in front of him and he shot at the target. There was an explosion and all the students were very surprised, including the teachers. The students continued to stand there, their mouths open in surprise, and when the smoke cleared, they saw that the target was completely broken. After this, the examiner said that Blair passed the exam. Bud looked at the broken target and said it was impossible. Toby was delighted and patted Blair on the head and asked if he had been hiding his talent all this time. After this, Anthony's teacher asked Blair to come to him and Brittany's teacher thought, how could he do this? Anthony's teacher took Blair to school and asked, so he practiced every day from books, and in the end he was able to create a fireball. Blair confirmed his words and Anthony said that magic is a gift from the gods to people, even ancient magicians used gestures and spells to release their abilities, and those who were deprived of abilities were called abandoned gods. There are many such people, and he is one of them, but now the gods have rewarded him with their gift, this happens very rarely. In addition, today in the exam he showed excellent speed and strength. He put his hand on his shoulder and said that he had great potential as a wizard. Blair thought that last time he was persuaded to take up mathematics and now magic. Blair thanked Anthony's teacher for his praise and said that when he first came into this world, he became very interested in magic. But now he wants to go back to his world. Anthony asked, to his world, what is he talking about? Blair suddenly realized what he said and apologized, saying that he had just read books on magic and was talking nonsense. He thought he was such a fool, he spilled the beans. Anthony said that he really seemed to be putting in a lot of effort lately, and that other world he was just talking about was apparently from the legends of the Holy Master. Blair thought, Holy Master, this is probably the highest rank of magicians. Anthony's teacher said that according to legend, there was once a Holy Master who could control space, tear it apart and go to another world. But these are just legends, they all know perfectly well that the gods created only their world, no other exists. Blair asked, space management, space gap, a trip to another world. 
Blair grabbed the teacher by the shoulders and he called out to him in surprise. Blair exclaimed that he should become a holy master. After the magic exam, the academy announced several days off, during which time Blair looked through almost all the books on magic in the library. Mages in this world are divided into seven levels, low, medium, high, great magician, master, grand master and sacred master. Sacred magister is the highest level spoken of in legends. Their magical abilities are described in ancient books, currently there are no people left who have seen them. Many books indicate that the sacred masters possess the magic of space, they could tear space and move between worlds. Although now many people think that there is no other world, and the magic of space is just a legend. But since he was able to move, he thinks that the magic of space still exists, and this is his only hope of returning to the real world. But teacher Anthony does not believe in the magic of space, so he will not receive new information from him. The old librarian tapped his finger on the table and asked, does he read everything? Blair thought it was the administrator who came. The old man said that it was time for him to work, idlers had nothing to do in their library. Blair awkwardly scratched the back of his head and said that he was on his way. Time passed, morning came. Blair walked out of the library and thought he had licked everything clean. He didn't think it was so hard to work in the library. His lower back hurts, his arms and legs are shaking. He opened the door and went into his class, and after that the students began to whisper. One of them said that Blair had the largest fireball in the test, even larger than Anthony's teacher. Had he really been hiding his abilities all this time? Another girl said that she hadn't noticed before, but Blair is quite handsome. No wonder Isabella came. Suddenly Blair noticed Isabella and thought, what is she doing here? Isabella sat in his place with her feet on the table. He immediately turned away and mentally told her not to look at him. Isabella jumped up and said that she didn't know he was the same Blair. Blair turned to her and told her to listen to him, it was just a misunderstanding. Isabella called him a pervert and told him to shut up. After that, her hand caught fire and Blair asked, she's not going to do it right here. Isabella cast a spell and Blair covered his hands, cursing. Then he opened his eyes and saw that Brittany's teacher grabbed Isabella's hand and prevented her from doing this. She asked why she uses magic in the audience. Isabella told her to listen, it was all him. Brittany raised her hand and told her to be quiet. She called out to Blair and said that she was just looking for him, let him follow him into the office. Then she called out to Isabella and said that she would go too. Blair shrugged and thought, what should he do? He has no choice. After that, they both left the classroom and silence reigned between the students. Bud thought that Blair was just an idiot. What happened to him? Meanwhile, in Brittany's office, Blair said that he accidentally bumped into Isabella, he really wants to apologize, let her forgive him. Brittany said that everything is cleared up, she can trust him, he did it by accident. She called out to Isabella and said that she should not argue. Isabella replied that if she said so, then she would forgive him. Brittany told Blair that she saw him on the exam and he exceeded all her expectations. He won the argument, she will no longer insist. But can he tell her how he did it? It was the first time she had seen how a person who did not have the gift of magic suddenly acquired it. Blair replied that he was just lucky. By the way, he has a question for her about magic. Brittany smiled and said that if he didn't want to talk, then she wouldn't force him. Let him ask, she will help in any way she can. Blair asked, are spells and hand gestures required to release an element? Isabella laughed and asked, what kind of stupid question is this? Even children know this, of course, to call an element you need a spell and gestures. Blair asked, is it like this for all magicians? Are there really no exceptions? The teacher replied that even strong magicians need spells and gestures, but the more they understand the element, the less time it takes them. Magic is a gift from the gods, the gods taught people to use gestures to summon an element, and thus magic was passed down from generation to generation. To summon an element without all this, one must have divine enlightenment. Isabella asked why she answered his stupid questions so seriously. Blair looked at his hands and wondered if because he was from another world, the gods of this world ignored him. Brittany said that this is basic knowledge about magic. If he wants to become a magician, then he should first study the theory well. But she called him today on important business. She handed him a piece of paper and he asked what it was. Blair unfolded the paper and Isabella said that he didn't know that either. This is a scientific newsletter. All the most important scientific works are published here. But suddenly she was very surprised and asked, is the name of the teacher Brittany and Blair? Brittany said that she figured out the summation method that Blair showed her and she even wrote a paper on it. Since Blair put forward this method, his name should also be published. Blair thought that he did not need a name in the newspaper, it would be better if they paid him money. He worked in the library every day for pennies, he doesn't even always have enough for food. The teacher got up from the table and said that she almost forgot. She handed him the bag and said that this was a reward for publication, there were 50 pieces of silver. Let this be nothing compared to scientific fame, 
but let this money go to him. Blair was delighted with the reward and thought that he was dying of fatigue in the library for two pieces of silver a month, but here it's as much as fifty. But he stretched out his hand and asked if he could take it. This is half her merit. Brittany agreed and said that was true, then she would take half for herself. She poured out half the coins for herself and said that these were his twenty-five pieces of silver. She thought that he was so kind, she would not offend him. Blair got upset and thought, what the hell? He just said that out of politeness. She accepted it as the truth. She still sparkled all over. With one phrase he lost twenty-five pieces of silver, it's time for him to learn to watch his language. Suddenly an idea came to his mind and he asked the teacher, for every article published in the newspaper you get fifty pieces of silver. She thought about it and replied that she hadn't even thought about it. It must be true that each article published in a scientific journal costs fifty pieces of silver. Blair said he had some idea then. Recently he thought that the number of a set begins with the second term, and the ratio of each previous term is equal to a constant value. Maybe there is a formula for summing them up. Brittany asked, is he talking about the Routh riddle? Blair asked again, is Routh's riddle? She replied that the ruse riddle was a mathematical problem put forward by the ancient sages. Routh has seven children, each child has seven bags, each bag has seven cats, and each cat has seven kittens. Blair agreed and said that there are not many numbers in this problem. If you add them up, they can get the answer. But if there were more numbers, then in this case another solution method would be very helpful. Brittany asked, is he saying he can solve Routh's riddle using a different method? Blair replied that he had some ideas. The teacher was delighted and said that they needed to work on his method. Several hours passed, Isabella dozed off and woke up to the enthusiastic voice of the teacher, who shouted that this was incredible. He solved the riddle of Routh with one formula. His math skills are second to none. Are you sure he doesn't want to do research with her? Isabella put her hand on Blair's shoulder and said that she didn't know he was so good at math. Did he really come up with this on his own? Blair asked if she really wanted to know. Isabella confirmed his words and told her not to lie to her. Blair pointed his finger at her and said that he doesn't have any special talents, he just studies math when other people are asleep. Isabella asked in surprise, is this true? Thus, Chen Luo's geometric progression summation formula amazed the people and his little plan goes like clockwork. Some time passed, Isabella walked along the corridor and thought that it seemed that what this pervert told her really made sense. But she doesn't know why she has some strange feeling. Suddenly she noticed him and quickly hid around the corner, thinking, isn't he in his second year? Why did he come to the third year building? Did he really decide to help other students? She looked around the corner and thought that this time she would catch him red-handed. Suddenly she saw that he was missing and thought, where is he? Meanwhile, Blair was already on the street and remembered Toby's words that there was a low stone fence behind the third year building. There was no one there, so he could safely climb over. But he won't do anything bad, will he? If anything happens, don't let him say that he told him. Blair looked at the stone fence in front of him and thought that Toby must have been talking about this place. He climbed over the fence and thought that Anthony's teacher had recently said that if he wanted to learn more about magic, then he should go to the Magic Association in Yabo City, where he could find more experienced teachers. Blair looked into the distance and, seeing the city streets in front of him, thought it was interesting. Life was in full swing on the city street, sellers were selling goods, and someone was discussing something. Blair walked down the street and saw the Magical Association and thought it was so luxurious. Is this a magical association? He took out a mask from his pocket and put it on his face, thinking that he needed to be careful, he had better not reveal his identity. He walked into the Magic Association, where Jasmine greeted him at the reception desk. He explained everything to her and she asked, so he wants to find a magic consultant, right? Blair confirmed her words and thought, is this not Jasmine from his group? What is she doing here? Does she work here part-time? Jasmine did not recognize him and said that the fee for consulting a high-level mentor would be 10 gold a month, an average level would cost 5 gold, and a low-level mentor would cost 2 gold. Let him say what he wants. Blair stopped listening to her and thought, why does he have to suffer so much? One gold piece costs 100 silver pieces, and he now has 30. Blair headed towards the exit and apologized for disturbing him, but Jasmine stopped him and said that if he had problems with money, then he could make a subscription to their library. Blair asked, to the library? Jasmine confirmed his words and said that the library of the Magical Association contains several tens of thousands of publications on magic, and he can learn almost all the knowledge about magic from their books. It may not be comparable to consultations with a mentor, but it is absolutely free. Blair was delighted and thought, can he have a subscription? Jasmine agreed and said that he needed to provide his ID. Blair did not answer and she said that since he wanted a consultation, she thought that he himself was a magician. To make a subscription, you need at least proof that he is studying magic. Blair was completely upset and thought that it would be better for Isabella to kill him then. 
Jasmine said with a smile that it was quite easy to prove. For example, if he wants to prove his abilities in fire elemental magic, then he needs to create a fireball in front of an expert. He asked, can this be done here? Jasmine confirmed his words, and then looked away and said that she did not advise him to do this today. Today's expert is quite strict, they say that his pass rate is only 10%. Already 300 magicians have failed his exam. Blair replied that it's okay, he wants it today. He thought it would be difficult to climb over the fence again. Jasmine took Blair into the office and told Mr. Andre that Mr. wanted to confirm his abilities. Blair looked at Andre and thought that he was wearing a red mage robe with two silver stripes, he was a mid-level magician of the fire element. Andre took a sip of tea from a mug and asked what his name was. Why is he wearing a mask? Blair replied that his name was Chen Luo, he put on the mask because he received a burn while training in the fireball technique. The old man sitting next to Andre said that he burned his own face. Apparently his fireballs are not easy. Andre said his name and said that he had a strange name. Since he came to the exam at that age, then at most he will become a low-level magician. Jasmine smiled and invited Mr. Andre to go to the exam room. He did not agree and Jasmine left, but he said that they would not conduct the exam here and I needed a deposit. Let him show his fireball technique, let him try to attack him. Blair asked, here, isn't there enough space here? The old man asked, does he really think he can hurt Andre with his little ball? Since he says to attack, then let him attack, let him not waste their time. Blair replied that if so, then let them judge for themselves. He began to cast a spell and gesture, and Andre watched him and said that his gestures were so sharp, he cast the spell slowly. Blair extended his hand forward and flames began to accumulate around him, everyone was surprised, and Andre was scared and told him to wait. Blair suddenly opened his eyes and finished casting the spell, forming a huge fireball. The fireball flew towards Andre and there was a strong explosion, after a few seconds the smoke began to clear and Jasmine began to cough. The old man who was at the center of the explosion also coughed, because he protected Mr. Andre with his shield. Andre looked at the shield in front of him in fear and the old man removed it, then he touched Andre's shoulder and Jasmine was horrified. Blair apologized and said that he thought they were ready, so he hit with all his might. After this, Jasmine gave Blair a magician's ID and a library card. Blair looked at the library card and Jasmine said that he showed great fireball skill. She had never seen a fireball so powerful. Someday he will definitely become a great magician. Blair headed to the library and, calling her by name, thanked her and said that they would see each other later. Jasmine also said goodbye to him and thought how did he know her name. In the library Blair saw other magicians and thought that he didn't even think that there would be so many people here. He sat down at the table and began to read books with the thought that this was strange. Jasmine correctly said that there are many more books here than in the academy, and besides, the content is more in-depth, especially about magical spiritual power. The level of magical spiritual power is the main criterion for determining the level of the magician. The higher the spiritual power, the more closely it is connected to the magical element, the stronger the magic will be. Moreover, high-level mages with high spiritual power can even control the magic element of lower-level mages. This leads to the fact that during a battle between mages, there is almost no way to overcome the difference in levels. However, the books about the four magical elements are written rather chaotically. After all, the level of education in this world is quite low. Magicians in this world believe that the four elements are not only the basis of magic, but also the basis of the entire world. The remaining elements are combined into these main four elements in certain proportions. Of course, if he looks at all this from the point of view of modern science, their worldview is very primitive. Judging by the laws of physics, all matter consists of atoms. Atoms form molecules through covalent bonds, and through ionic bonds they combine into ions and form different chemical elements with different structures. Even high school students know that matter is made up of different elements, and the so-called four elements in the table of elements do not exist. But since there are magical elements in this world, he cannot find a scientific explanation for it. What if in this world he can interact with magical elements? He suddenly jumped up from his seat, startling the other library patrons, and thought that if he could, he could create new magic. He took a library card and ran out of the library thinking that he would try this. Meanwhile, Andre and the old man were watching him. Jasmine brought two cups and said that this was their coffee. Andre looked at Blair and said that this Chen Luo had very low spiritual power, but he was able to create an unimaginably strong fireball. The old man said that what is even more strange is that he cannot control the summoned element. Maybe he has something they can't understand. After a while, Blair returned to the academy and climbed over the fence. He found himself in a clearing and thought that there was no one here, so he would try right here. He began to concentrate and inhaled thick smoke. He suddenly opened his eyes and thought that he could feel and control the flow. Smoke began to emanate from his hand. He thought that he would try to direct the flow of Kai into the second element. 
A clot formed from his hand and he thought it was oxygen too. But is it really the element of pure oxygen? He cannot determine it by eye. It continued to form in his hand and he thought, this is it. He used the fire element and thought what if it was really oxygen. But suddenly the fire went out and he said that apparently not. This is not what he imagined. What is this anyway? Some thin stream of smoke. But he doesn't believe that he can't do it. He tried again and magical energy began to gather around him. From this cycle the glass and all the other fragile things in the academy began to crack and Brittany, who was working at the time, felt energy fluctuations and looked at the cracked window, seeing an explosion behind it. Meanwhile, smoke began to rise in the forest and Blair began to cough. Within seconds the smoke began to clear and Blair thought it was good that he had reacted quickly. But suddenly he got a little scared when he saw a large depression in the ground and thought that it was due to an explosion. Everything here was completely burnt. When flammable substances combine with air, they produce carbon dioxide, water and sulfur dioxide, which burn. Complete combustion releases the entire heating value of the fuel. It seems that this oxygen is even purer than he expected. Suddenly Blair heard the voice of a student shouting, What happened there? Blair started to run away and thought that he didn't think there would be so much noise here. He needs to get out of here. The student called out to him, but Blair ran on and thought that he had made a little noise, but it seemed that he had created something worthwhile. The next day he sat in class and dozed off, thinking that he would never study all night again. But suddenly Toby put his hand on his back and asked, Does he know what happened at the academy last night? Blair replied that he slept like a log last night. What's happened? Toby said that last night there was an explosion near the third year building, all the windows were broken. The academy is investigating, he thinks it was some high level magician. He didn't see what was there now, a magician of no less than a high level definitely possesses such power. But why would a high level magician do something like this at the academy? Blair replied that he did not know, he had never even seen such magicians. Toby asked how could he not see high level magicians? Isn't Brittany's teacher a high level magician? Blair was very surprised, and after that he knocked on the door of Brittany's office and she opened it for him. She said he was just in time, she needed him. She showed him the newspaper and said that the Association of Mathematicians had already published an article about the ruse riddle. Since he proposed this solution method, his name is listed first in the authors. She congratulates him, he has solved the most difficult problem in the world of mathematics. Blair said that he came to her on important business. She asked, is it important? Blair said she should let him do math with her. Brittany was surprised and asked if he didn't say that he wanted to become a magician. Blair replied that he wants to become a magician, but he also likes mathematics, he doesn't want to regret it later. It even seems to him that in a past life he was an outstanding mathematician, as great as she. She grabbed his hand and said that she was very glad to hear that. She hugged him to her chest and said that from now on every day after school they would do math. A volcanic eruption occurred in Blair's head and he quickly pulled away from the enthusiastic teacher, and she said that with his abilities, he just needs to strengthen it, and he will definitely become a great scientist. Blair asked if she would help him with questions about magic. Brittany agreed and Blair thanked her and said that he was off then. After that, he left her office and Brittany told him not to forget to come tomorrow. Blair said goodbye to her, but Brittany told him to wait. She didn't say anything and Blair called out to her questioningly. Brittany thought about it and after a short pause said that she had thought about something, and he decided to study mathematics with her, not because of her help in magic. Blair realized that she understood everything and she looked at him, waiting for an answer. At that moment, different thoughts began to flash through Blair's head. What should he do? Now he will have to leave this world forever. She will rip his head off, and he wants to live a little longer. He opened his mouth and after a second asked, what is she saying? He just thought that since they would spend so much time together, it would be more convenient for him to ask her about magic. She walked up to him and put her hand on his shoulder, saying that she said, he has a talent for mathematics and he can use it as a tool. She led him to the exit of the office and told him to go and rest, let him remember to come after class. Blair left the office and thought that this woman was both smart and stupid at the same time. The next evening he came to Brittany's office and said that he had arrived, but he stopped in the passage when he saw Isabella inside. She looked at him with irritation and asked why he came. Brittany apologized to her and said that she forgot to say that from today Blair will also be doing math with them, so let her take care of him. Isabella turned away sharply and Brittany told Blair to sit down next to Isabella, she had prepared a task for him. They threw one stone into the well, and after a while they threw another stone, but twice as heavy as the previous one. So when will the second stone catch up with the first? Isabella said that to solve this problem they would need to know the interval and Blair interrupted her and replied that the first stone would never catch up with the second. Strictly speaking, if they do not pay attention to air resistance, the large stone will never catch up with the small one. 
Miss Abelitus displeased Lee and said that he doesn't even know such basic things. Brittany said that while she didn't know what he meant by air resistance, everyone knew that the speed at which a body falls is directly proportional to its mass. Isabella said that the greater the mass, the faster the body falls. This was established by the ancient sages, even children know this. Blair listened to them and asked, if the sages said so, then is it necessarily true? Have they ever seen this? Isabella asked, did he dare to challenge ancient wisdom? Brittany noticed that an argument was brewing between them and Blair said that the science should be accurate and so should the approach to it. If the truth cannot be proven, then it is not the truth. Isabella asked, then since he wants proof, can they make a bet? Blair replied that betting was an unacceptable activity for a student and he would never agree to it. Brittany told them to stop, but suddenly Isabella interrupted her and said that they were betting on 10 gold. Blair jumped up from his chair and asked, why not? Brittany's teacher will be their witness. Brittany sighed tiredly, and after that they came to the tower. Brittany held stones in her hands and said that one stone was twice the size of the other. She turned to Blair and told him to think again, after all, 10 gold was a decent amount. Blair replied that he had already thought about it. Isabella asked if he really thought he would win. Blair remained silent and Brittany said that self-confidence is good, but he doesn't need to be too smug. After that, she rose into the air with the help of the wind element and Blair was surprised, saying that this was great. Isabella said that it was a wind element flying technique, but of course he didn't know anything about it. Brittany climbed to the top of the tower, preparing to throw stones. Isabella grinned and told Blair that he would lose. Brittany then extended both her arms forward and threw the stones. They flew down at the same time and fell at the same time. Isabella looked at the stones in surprise, and Blair grinned and Brittany went down to them. She landed nearby, seeing that two stones were lying next to each other and was very surprised, and then exclaimed, How is this possible? Isabella and Brittany thought they fell at the same time. Brittany looked at Blair and asked how he knew that the law of falling bodies was wrong. He replied that he had read this law in a textbook and checked it with two stones. This is how he realized that in reality the rules in the textbooks are different. Brittany thought that truths that had been passed down for over 1,000 years could be disproven by just throwing two stones. And no one in 1,000 treats has done this. How many scientists don't know that the simple truths they know are not actually true? Why was Blair able to spot this so easily? She thinks it's not all about luck. She said that he probably never realized how important those two stones were. She thinks that in the near future, a law under his name will appear in textbooks. Blair replied that there was still a lot of work to be done in the new law of falling, and besides, it was not only his merit, the three of them did it. Blair thought that again he got empty glory, he would play a little on emotions. Brittany replied that it was entirely his fault, she just threw two stones. However, if he wants, they can finalize this law together with Isabella. Isabella asked, with her. Blair replied that he would, of course, need Isabella's help. Will she help him? Isabella was surprised and imagined them working together and remained silent, then she thought, does he need her help? She turned away from him and said that since he said so, she would help. Blair thanked her and Isabella thought about how it would sound. Law of falling bodies Blair and Isabella. Blair and Isabella. She pursed her lips from such thoughts and told Blair that if someone offends him at the academy, then let him tell her, she will help him. She thought that Blair wasn't so bad, he was very smart and also handsome. Blair thanked her and then extended his hand to her and she thought, what is he doing? Does he want to shake her hand? What was he up to? And why was she so upset? She asked what he was doing. Blair replied that he was waiting for 10 gold. He looked at her with a smile and thought that he was rich. Isabella understood what he was thinking about and thought that his head was full of only this. After that she gave him 10 gold pieces and told him not to count, there were exactly 10 gold pieces. Blair was delighted and thought that in one bet he won 10 gold, he became rich in one day. Isabella called out to him and said that he seemed more interested in money than fame. But it seems to her that he still does this not only for the sake of money. Blair thought about it and she asked what he wants. Blair opened his mouth slightly, but remained silent and decided not to answer anything. He remembered moments from his previous life and then closed his eyes a little and asked what she was talking about. He just wants to earn money and live better. He smiled and said that it was late, he would go, they would meet tomorrow. Isabella was a little upset and watched him go. The next day Blair lay on his desk and thought that he had a feeling that it was much more comfortable to sleep on this desk than in that cubicle. Well, at least now he has money. He must move on. Suddenly his thoughts were interrupted by a sharp crash from a hit on the table. He saw that Bud did it and he said that Fage was looking for him, but he was still lying there. Blair asked, Fage, who is this? Bud pulled him towards him by his clothes with displeasure and asked if he had completely lost his fear. He thinks that since he made a fireball, now he can do anything. 
Suddenly some guy came up to them and told Bud to let him go. Bud looked at the headman Phage and pursed his lips. Phage looked at Blair, and Blair looked at him and thought, is this the Phage? Phage approached him and asked if his name was Blair. He smiled and Blair said nothing, then he looked at Bud and asked, did he hear? He was told to let him go. Bud reluctantly let him go and Blair asked the headman if something happened. Phage said that he should stay away from Isabella. People like him shouldn't communicate with her. He told his friends that they were leaving and one of them asked if they would do anything to him. Phage collided with Toby, rubbed his shoulder displeasedly and headed towards the exit from the audience. Toby approached Blair and asked if he was okay. What happened? Blair replied that it was nothing. Phage and Bud just wanted to talk to him. Toby asked, Phage, what did he do to him? Blair asked, who is this Phage? Is he afraid of him? Toby replied that this is the headman, everyone at the academy is afraid of him. Only an eccentric like him, who always disappears behind books, cannot be afraid of him. Phage comes from the famous Howard family of the city of Yabo, he is the son of a Viscount. Viscount Howard is an important person in the Society of Numbers. Many teachers at the academy are also members of this society. If he offended Phage, then he is afraid he will have a hard time at the academy. He realizes that he is fascinated by Isabella's beauty, but he advises him not to neglect Phage's warning. Blair asked in what sense is he fascinated. Time passed, Blair came to the teacher's office and thought that although the power of pure oxygen fireballs was enormous, he should first summon the ball and only then extract the oxygen element. Then the ball will not explode, and his main advantage will be that he will not need spells and hand gestures. But how is it possible to assign two different elements at the same time? Isabella called out to him and told him that he had better solve the problem that teacher Brittany had given them. Tomorrow she will explain everything. After her words, Blair yawned and handed her a piece of paper with his decision. She was surprised and asked if he had already finished. She only got through half of it. Blair replied that everything cannot be solved in one old way, it is necessary to find original solutions. Isabella looked at his decision and asked, so it was possible to do so. He sat closer to her and asked if she could summon two fireballs at the same time. She replied that she could do a few. What is it? Blair asked in surprise, several. How so? Isabella smiled contentedly and asked, what? The brilliant Blair can only summon one at a time. Blair scratched his head and replied that he had received many books on magic but he had never found a way to summon more than one element at a time. Isabella replied that of course, because the books only contain the basics, there are no such artificial techniques there. Her father invited her to a high-ranking magic consultant, who taught her how to summon several elements at the same time. But if someone called her sister, she would help him learn it. Blair easily called her sister and the smile on Isabella's face began to disappear. She was embarrassed and asked what kind of facial expression was this. She stood up and said that let him follow her, she would teach him. After that, they entered the clearing and Brittany began to summon fireballs. She summoned several fireballs at once, and Blair was very surprised, saying that there were actually several of them. Also so stable, Isabella said that the main key to summoning multiple fireballs is the distribution of spiritual powers. Many people think that spiritual forces can only be directed to one place, but once he masters this technique, he will be able to distribute the power to different places. Every part of this force is capable of summoning an element. This way they can summon several balls. Blair asked, is it possible to summon different elements using different parts of the forces? She replied that it was a great question, in theory it is possible, but in practice it is difficult to do. It's like drawing a square with one hand and a circle with the other. Meanwhile, Bud was watching them and thought, are they really in a relationship? After that he told Phage everything and he broke the wall with his fingers out of anger and said that Blair would definitely pay him for this. Meanwhile, Blair tried to cast a spell and thought, does he need to divide the spiritual power into nine particles? He concentrated and Isabella told him to remember that everything must be done as she says. He must share the spiritual power step by step. But if he doesn't succeed, then let him be upset. She, for example, trained for six months before she was able to consistently divide the power. After these words, another fireball flashed in Blair's hand and Isabella was very surprised to see many fireballs around him. She asked in surprise, how could he do this? Blair replied that he did everything as she told him. He divided this spiritual power into nine parts and summoned a fireball. Isabella replied that she was not talking about that. She asks how could he do this right now. Blair replied that he understood the technique and was able to do it. Wasn't that the case with her? She remained silent and thought that this pervert was already a genius in mathematics, he was also a genius in magic. And who said that he was abandoned by the gods? He's clearly their favorite. She stamped her foot in displeasure and replied that of course, it happened to her too. She figured it out faster. She ran away and said that she would not teach him, let him now deal with magic himself and not ask her. Blair remained silent and thought, did he offend her again? Women are so strange. 
He put his hand in his pocket and felt something there, and meanwhile Brittany was walking across the clearing and thought that he had pissed her off so much. Suddenly Blair grabbed her hand and she turned around and asked what he needed. She looked down at his palm, in which there was a bracelet with a cat, and Blair told her with a smile that what he was able to learn was entirely thanks to her lesson. So he asks her to accept his gratitude. Isabella looked at the bracelet with the cat and blushed, and then said that he still has a conscience. She thought that this idiot wasn't so stupid. She snatched the bracelet from his hands and ran further, saying that the bracelet was ugly anyway. But suddenly she fell and Blair told her to be careful. She rose to her feet and then turned to look at Blair and he wondered why she was staring at him like that. What should he do? Should he come over and feel sorry for her? Won't she yell at him? She ran further and said that it was all because of him. She won't leave it like that. Blair smiled awkwardly and wondered what he did wrong. After that, he lay down on the grass and, looking at the sky, thought that if she didn't like it, she wouldn't have taken it. He spent 50 silver on it. At first he wanted to give the bracelet to Brittany's teacher, but this is better. But suddenly his view of the sky was blocked by Phage's friends and Bud said that it seemed that the elder Phage had warned him. Let him not dare to approach Isabella. Blair got to his feet and then ran away and Phage's friends told him to stop. Blair thought that he didn't see the point in messing with these guys. Bud called out to Blair and asked if he would really run away during a battle like his dad. Until they kill him. These words stopped Blair and Bud told him to run. Why is he running away? He laughed and asked, did he press on the sore spot? He attacked him and said that he asked for it. He wanted to hit him, but at the last moment he pulled back and received a burn. Blair turned around and started casting fireballs and Bud said he was in pain. Blair said that although he was not his father, he was a brave warrior who died for his homeland. He was a wonderful father, so don't dare insult him. Did he understand it? Phage's other friends counted the number of balls that Blair conjured and said that there were nine of them. How is this possible? They ran away and Bud asked where the two of them were going. Blair came closer to him and Bud got scared and told him not to come closer. It is forbidden to fight in the academy. Blair asked, so he knows about this rule and attacked him anyway. Bud leaned against the wall and said he didn't need to do this. Blair continued to approach him and said that he should have thought sooner. He wanted to direct all the fireballs at him, but suddenly he noticed that there was someone behind him and Bud began screaming for help. He opened his eyes full of tears and saw that Blair had fallen in front of his feet and looked at him in surprise. He pointed his finger at him and thought, what happened to this guy? He started to run away, thinking that it didn't matter to him, he'd better run. Blair was approached by teachers and Brittany told Bud to stop. Bud raised his hands up and replied that he didn't do anything. Let them believe him, he fell himself. Brittany pulled Blair up and asked if he didn't do anything, then how did this happen to him? Don't let them think she doesn't know how they feel about Blair. Bud replied that it used to be like that, but now he didn't do anything. He will explain everything. Suddenly the old man told him to stop. Blair lies at his feet, so don't let him play the fool. Even now he continues to spoil the image of the academy. Let him go to his office now and wait for him there, he will deal with him. Bud agreed and the old man told the vice chairman of the Archie Society that it was all the fault of the management of their academy, he apologizes for this spectacle. Archie called the old man Calvin's deputy and replied that fights between young people and educational institutions are common, but, to be honest, they should be stricter with them. What is Blair's current state? Brittany noticed that Blair was weak and called out to him, after which he sighed and thought that he had gone to heaven, the heavens smiled on him. Brittany started shaking him and asked what was wrong with him. Blair replied that everything was fine until she almost strangled him. She hugged him and said it was good. Does he know how worried she was? Blair apologized to the teacher and Calvin coughed, drawing attention to himself, and told Blair that they would definitely deal with this matter, but they came differently to a very important matter. Brittany said that she forgot to introduce it to him. She pointed to the old man and said that this is the vice chairman of the Calvin Society, he must know him. Next to him is the vice chairman of the Archie community, he is from the Mathematical Society. Blair greeted them and Calvin said that he helped Brittany's teacher solve Ralph's riddle, which was very promising. Brittany said he got something mixed up. Blair solved this riddle himself, she only helped him write the article. Calvin said that by solving the Ralph riddle, they would be nominated for the Edwin Prize, this is a great pride for the city of Yabo. If she wishes, they will do their best to help her receive this award. Let her think about it carefully, the Edwin Prize is the most important award in the mathematical community. This will be a huge asset both to her and to the academy. Brittany thought about it and asked, Blair can't have it. Calvin sighed and replied that he was still too young. In the mathematical society no one had the same results as her. If she says that it was he who solved the riddle of Ralph, then no one will believe it. Brittany wanted to object, but Blair called out to her and took her hand approvingly. Brittany looked at him and Calvin said that she could discuss this with Blair again. When they decide, then let him tell him. Their society will respect their decision in any case. 
Brittany agreed, and after that they did not leave and she and Blair returned to the academy. They walked down the corridor together and Brittany told Blair that although the solution to the Routh riddle was not usually something unusual, its solution was a great breakthrough in the history of mathematics. It belongs to him, so a stranger should not receive this reward in his place. Blair remained silent and then said that she did not know, but this award should not be his at all. He turned around and said with a smile that, besides, she was not a stranger at all. Brittany was surprised and asked what he said. Blair wanted to answer something, but Brittany said that it was too late, let him return soon, she still has things to do, so she will go. Blair remained silent and thought, did he say something wrong again? Blair walked longer through the corridors and saw a crowd that was crowded around the notice board. They looked at the article and thought, is there some news again? Who is Blair? Does this moron also write articles? One of the students said that this Blair again published an article with the teacher. Seems to be about some kind of mystery. Her friend said it was Routh's riddle. She heard that many scientists could not find a solution for centuries. Is Blair really that smart? Surely the teacher helped him. Blair walked past them, covering his face, and one of the students said that this Blair must have found a way to suck up to the teacher. Blair thought he didn't expect Brittany's teacher to publish an article under two names. He sighed tiredly and suddenly heard someone calling someone an idiot. He noticed Calvin around the corner and a man who was shouting and asking, did he fight again at the academy? This man was Bud's father, he scolded his son. He asked, did they send him to the academy to start fights here? Does he like to fight? He swung and said that then today he would kill him. He hit his son with a stick and told the dean of Calvin that he would definitely teach him a lesson, just don't expel him. Calvin apologized and said Bud's behavior was unacceptable. This is a serious violation of school rules, they will have to do it. After these words, Bud's father fell to his knees and asked Calvin not to do this. The dean asked what he was doing. Bud's father started begging him and Bud told him to stop. Blair approached them and called out to Dean Calvin. The dean greeted him and he asked what happened to Bud. Bud gritted his teeth when he saw him, and Dean Calvin replied that he had violated the rules of the academy, they had already decided to expel him. Let him not worry, they will definitely take action. Suddenly Bud's father pulled Blair's clothes and asked if he was Blair. He asks him to forgive Bud, he will definitely teach him a lesson. It was not easy for them to enroll him in this academy, if he is expelled, then his whole life will go downhill. Blair looked at Bud's father with pity, and then sighed heavily and told the dean that although he and Bud had problems, he asked him not to punish him so harshly. Bud was surprised and silence fell between them. The dean said that since he was asking for Bud, the academy could temporarily postpone this decision. He then looked at Bud and said that if he did something like that again, the academy wouldn't give him a second chance. Bud's father made his son bow and said that he should quickly thank Blair and Dean Calvin. Bud thanked the dean and Blair, and then bowed his head in apology. Dean Calvin said that's good, now let them go to class. Bud and Blair went to class together and Bud asked why he did that. Blair stopped at the door to the auditorium and after a short pause replied that he did not want to let his father down. Bud thought about it, and after a short pause thanked Blair again. Blair opened the door to the auditorium and Bud spoke, causing Blair to stop. Bud looked into the audience and told Blair to be careful with Phage, he wouldn't just let him go. His uncle is the deputy director of the academy. After class, Blair went to the library and thought that today was such a difficult day, and he also had to go to work part-time. At the top of the stairs to the library he met the administrator and called out to him. The administrator asked if he had accidentally offended anyone. Blair asked what happened. The administrator sighed and said that from today he can no longer work in the library, and he also cannot live in the room. This is an order from the deputy director. After that, Blair went to Brittany's office and she said that today she wanted to take her and Isabella to a seminar at the Mathematical Society. Does he have anything to do tomorrow? He smiled awkwardly and apologized to her, saying that he had been kicked out of the library, so he needed to find himself a new place to live. She said that he should have told him about it right away, she had a spare room at home. Blair remained silent and she said that no one lived there, so he could move in with her. Blair asked, will they live together? Will this really be convenient? Brittany asked, what's uncomfortable? If they live together, they can study mathematics at any time. If he has questions, he can ask them too. Is not it so? Blair replied that it sounded good. Brittany smiled and said that if they did so, then after the ball he would move in. Blair remained silent, and then Isabella burst into the office and asked the teacher why Blair was here. Brittany replied that Blair was also going with them to the seminar. Besides, he had just lost his job at the library, from today he would be living with her. Isabella exclaimed, how can she live with this pervert? Brittany replied that she had already told her many times, Blair was not like that at all. Isabella replied that she was worried about her, this pervert is so cunning. Blair got upset and asked why they call him that again. Brittany dragged Isabella to the exit and told her not to worry, let them go change, they need to go to the seminar quickly, otherwise they will be late. 
She looked at Blair and asked if he had any clothes for the day. Today will be his first time participating in a scientific seminar, so it would be better for him to wear something more formal. Blair asked, is it official? Is a magic robe suitable? Brittany replied that if he had it, it would do. In the evening they went to a scientific seminar, where many guests gathered and the teacher and her students were in smart clothes. Blair looked at Isabella in the dress and she said that they had arrived. Brittany said that this is the Howard family's estate and is also the site of the Mathematical Society's seminars. The Mathematical Society is a prominent formation in the Kingdom of Dialonan, so they chose the Howard estate. Every seminar of the Mathematical Society is held here. Blair looked at the huge house and asked, Is Howard Manor the Phage House? Archie stood at the entrance to the estate, discussing different solutions with his friends. Brittany walked up to them and called out to Archie, and he turned around and told Brittany and Blair that they had already arrived. Blair greeted him and Isabella, displeasedly folding her arms across her chest, thought, when did he meet the deputy chairman of the Mathematical Society? Archie told Brittany that he and his friends were just talking about her, if she wanted, he could introduce her to his friends. Brittany told Isabella and Blair to go, she would find them later. Blair and Isabella went inside the estate and Blair, looking at the table, thought that there were so many delicious things here. Rich people live completely differently. He tried the food and thought it was very tasty, he had never tasted anything like it. Isabella grabbed his hand and asked, is he a pig? Did Brittany's teacher take them with her so that he could fill his belly? He only disgraces them. Blair noticed something on the wall and asked what it was. He saw a drawing of bridges on the wall and Isabella said that this was the pride of the Howard family, the seven bridges of the royal capital. Blair asked again, seven bridges of the royal capital. Someone on the side asked, does he even know about this? Did he come to participate in the seminar? Fage stood nearby, leaning on the wall. He asked Blair, did he come to his house to ask for food? He will need to talk to his servants about hygiene. Since they let a person like him into the house, they clearly don't care about it. Isabella said that Blair came with them. How can he speak? Fage asked if he said something wrong. He doesn't even know about the seven bridges of the royal capital, but he ate the most food. Isabella started to lead Blair away and told him to ignore him. They had to go. Fage got angry when he saw her holding his hand and asked Blair what was wrong. Will he still hide under her skirt? Blair turned around and asked, are there seven bridges in the royal capital? Sounds interesting, maybe he can tell him this. Isabella called out to Blair and he said that he just wanted to hear about the seven bridges of the royal capital. Maybe he can come up with a new method. Fage asked, new method. Brittany's teacher simply felt sorry for him, so she wrote his name in the article. He doesn't really consider himself a gifted mathematician, does he? Isabella exclaimed, what does he understand about this? It was Blair who came up with a way to solve the riddle, so his name was included. Fage replied that even if that was the case, he would see if he had any more new ideas. He turned to the rest of the guests and told them to look, Mr. Blair says that he can find a solution to the seven bridges of the royal capital. Isabella looked irritably at Fage and one of the guests said that Blair was the young man who could solve the ruse riddle together with Brittany's teacher. Another guest said that the milk on his lips had not yet dried, how could he do this? Another guest said that Brittany took pity on him and wrote his name in the article, now he thinks he can solve the seven bridges of the royal capital. Brittany heard this and Fage called Blair a math genius and said that he should not disappoint them. Blair responded that he didn't say he was going to resolve this. Suddenly Brittany grabbed Blair's hand and he asked what is it. She asked in a whisper why he got into a quarrel with Fage. He doesn't know how powerful the Howard family is. If he angers them, he will have problems not only with the mathematical society, but also with the academy. Moreover, mathematicians have been struggling with the solution to the seven bridges of the capital for centuries. Fage wants him to try to solve this riddle only to embarrass him in front of everyone. Fage called out to Brittany's teacher and asked if she herself said that Blair was a math genius. Why doesn't she believe in him now? Brittany told him not to compare it. Blair interrupted her and replied that it was no big deal, he could try it out of gratitude for the fact that the headman helped him leave his position in the library. Brittany and Isabella were surprised and the teacher asked, does he really want to deal with this? Blair turned to the headman of Fage and said that since he insisted so, he would solve the seven bridges of the royal capital. Fage replied that he didn't think he was that stupid, then he'll see what he can do. The seven bridges of the royal capital is a riddle that was invented by the first generation of the Howard family. Since then, several hundred years have passed, except for the first generation, no one has been able to figure out the solution to the riddle. Several hundred years ago, the headman of their family was a high-ranking person. He noticed that the capital had a special terrain. At that time the city was not yet so big, the city was divided into two islands, which were located in the middle of the river. To make it possible to move between the islands, seven bridges were built. 
The islands were now connected to each other and to the banks of the river. These bridges helped residents of the capital establish mutually beneficial relationships. One day, the elder was looking at these seven bridges and a thought came to him. Is it possible to use these bridges to get to any place and also by going around each bridge just once to return to the starting point? When the elder put forward this idea, mathematicians throughout the kingdom began to think about this question. Many famous scientists came to the capital to find a solution. A lot of time passed, scientists put forward many theories, but no one understood how to return without crossing at least one bridge again. Until one day the elder himself found a solution. He announced this to all the mathematicians of the kingdom, and the next day everyone could see for themselves the correctness of his solution. Almost all the mathematicians of the kingdom gathered on the bridges. However, they waited until evening, but the elder did not appear. A few days later they discovered his body. Most likely, he was so excited about his discovery that he accidentally tripped and drowned in the river. The death of the elder was a huge loss for the mathematical society of the kingdom. Seven bridges of the royal capital were left without a solution. Even their Howard family still doesn't know the solution to this problem. Several hundred years have passed, a huge number of mathematicians have tried to find the answer, but no one has succeeded. Although the solution was lost, to preserve the memory of the first generation elder and the fact that he was the only one who could find the solution, their family hung this engraving in the living room. This is pride for the entire mathematical community. Blair thought that it means, as he thought, the seven bridges of the royal capital are the same as the seven bridges of Konigsberg. Blair replied that he would not be able to find a solution, but then no one would be able to find it. Phage chuckled and then laughed harder and asked, is this his answer? Wasn't he so sure? He's just a genius. Other guests, who were waiting for the solution to the riddle, began to wonder why they had come here. The girl said that he was just a little arrogant child. Her friend asked if she thought so, but it seems to her that he is not so simple. Phage wiped away his tears from laughter and Blair said that he would not find a solution just because this riddle about the seven bridges cannot be solved. Isabella and Brittany asked at the same time, can this be resolved? Phage asked what kind of nonsense he was talking about. He can't decide for himself, so he says so. Then how could the first generation elder of the Howard family come up with a solution? Blair replied that he would then say if he could prove that he had actually found a solution. What evidence is there for this? Phage got angry and exclaimed, what does this mean? Does he dare to doubt? Does he even know what position the elder held in the kingdom? Suddenly the Viscount told them to stop. He turned to his son and said that he had told him many times that he did not need to boast about the glory of their ancestors. Phage was afraid and asked his father for forgiveness. The Viscount approached Blair and asked, Is he Blair? Calvin talked about him. Blair bowed and said that it was a great honor for him. The Viscount said that he saw their argument with his son, he really did wrong, he asks for forgiveness for him. But he said that the seven bridges of the royal capital have no solutions, this discredits the honor of their ancestors. He hopes he takes back his words. Blair replied that he did not want to offend him, but the seven bridges of the royal capital really had no solution. Isabella looked at Blair and thought that this was the first time she had seen him be so confident. The Viscount began to get angry and asked if he wanted to check. Blair replied that he could prove it to everyone. He will explain why the royal capital family has no solution. He began to draw something on paper and said that, faced with such a difficult problem, many sages of that time decided to find a practical solution themselves. This method is worthy of respect, but if they look at the real result, then he is afraid that the answer will be difficult to find, because there are too many options, they exceed human power. He finished drawing on the paper and showed the drawing to the guests, and then said that in fact, they could depict a complex practical problem on the sheet as a simple numerical problem. Let each piece of land be a point. They will depict the bridge connecting the two sections as a line. This is the map we get. Then the seven bridges of the capital can be simplified as follows. If they can exit from each point without repeating the pattern, then this will mean that they can return to the original place without going around the seven bridges again. The guest exclaimed, was it possible? The girl was surprised and said it was amazing. Another girl turned to her friend and asked, so it was possible to do this. He simplified a practical problem into a drawing, it's just an amazing idea. She wasn't wrong, this Blair is really smart. Her friend just smiled and Blair said that it is obvious that other than the initial endpoint, when someone passes through a bridge onto a piece of land, they leave another bridge. Now, they will call points connected by segments of unpaired numbers singularity points. They will call points connected by segments of paired numbers paired points. Brittany said she got it. If they want to start from the starting point and eventually return to it, then they need to reach all the points. And also they need to leave all the points, so the solution will only be if all the points are paired. Blair said that's well said, that's the key point. One of the guests asked, then, the four points of the seven bridges of the royal capital. Blair did not listen to the end, he confirmed his words and said that everyone now sees that these four points near the seven bridges of the royal capital are singular. 
Therefore, no matter what method they choose, they will never be able to return to their original point without crossing the bridges again. Therefore, the seven bridges of the royal capital have no solution. All the guests froze in shock, and after that the man said that this theory has no flaws, which means this problem has no solution. Phage exclaimed, what nonsense is he talking about? After this, the guests began to talk among themselves in surprise. So the Howard family has been deceiving them all these years. How is this possible? There is no solution to the problem, they have been deceiving everyone for so long. Phage told them not to listen to this fool's nonsense. All the guests remained silent and the girl said that she was afraid that only their ancestor elder was talking nonsense. He also deceived the entire kingdom for so many years. Phage called his father, but he did not answer, then Phage decided to turn around and was immediately hit in the face by him. Phage fell to the floor from the blow and his father said that it was all his lousy mouth. If it weren't for him, he just embarrassed him. The Viscount told Blair that he remembered it. Just let him wait. Blair looked after the angry Viscount and asked him to wait. The Viscount turned around and Blair said that according to the rules of the Mathematical Society, he helped with Phage's question, now he must help him with his question. Is he saying it right? The Viscount looked at his son and then replied that they would act according to the rules of the Mathematical Society. Let him say what kind of question. Blair said his question is very simple. If the sides of a square are equal to one, then what is the diagonal? The Viscount was surprised and Brittany asked Blair if he didn't know that the Howard family put forward the Howard theorem. The Viscount replied that according to Howard's theorem, if the sides of a square are equal to 1, then the square of the length of the diagonal will be equal to 2. This is true. Blair shook his head and said that he did not answer his question. He was not asking about the square of the diagonal, but about the diagonal itself. The Viscount clenched his teeth in anger and one of the guests said that he had not thought about the diagonal itself. Another guest said that he could probably show them that too. The Viscount fell silent and Blair thought that everything was as he had expected. He knew about this number from the beginning. In his world, although scientists are respected, no one knows about them. People prefer to listen to gossip about celebrities than to learn about scientists who have contributed to the progress of mankind. In this same world, although science is at a low level, scientists are very revered. Here people respect knowledge even more than magic. Scientists who have made major contributions to science enjoy not only international fame, but also the respect of the royal family and aristocracy. Therefore, scientists come together, take control of economics and politics, and become a huge force. The mathematical society is one such force. The Howard family occupies an important position in the mathematical community, so the community has a significant say. Even the head of Yabo City, Father Isabella, must give the Howard family due respect. The mathematical society includes scientists, politicians, and religions. They believe that everything on earth can be represented in the form of numbers. In fact, their ideas are similar to those of the Pythagorean school. The school of Pythagoras was founded by the great scientist of ancient Greece. The school of Pythagoras had many followers, but there was one flaw in it that led to the disappearance of the school. This flaw was that they presented everything not in real, but in rounded numbers. Pythagoras believed that if you compare round and real numbers, you can express all the numbers in the world. Hippasus, a student of Pythagoras, was the first to discover this. He realized that it was impossible to express the diagonal of a square using the ratio of integers. This discovery shook the foundation on which the entire school of Pythagoras was based. When the students realized that they could not solve this problem, they decided to deal with the one who put forward this problem. In the end, they tied a large stone to Hippasus and threw it into the sea. But the truth could not be hidden for a long time. More and more people began to pay attention to the problem of Hippasus, and the school of Pythagoras was destroyed. Numbers that could not be expressed using whole number ratios came to be called irrational numbers. From then on, people began to expand their knowledge of numbers, and it grew into a field. Judging by the Viscount's expression, he had long known about the existence of irrational numbers. He wonders how people in this world treat Hippasus. The Viscount wiped away his cold sweat and one of the guests said that it was strange. Why can't she find this number? Another mathematician said that this is impossible, there cannot be a quantity that cannot be expressed by a number. What it is? Brittany asked Blair what's wrong with this number. Can't this be expressed in any number? Blair replied that this is a completely new number and there are many of them. In this world, someone had already found a similar number, but this discovery was hidden. But thanks to the help of Phage, this discovery will become known to people. Phage looked at his father and noticed that his hands were shaking with anger. He got scared, and then Kirsten, looking at Blair, shouted that it was all because of him. He attacked him and told him to die. He clenched his hand into a fist to hit him and Blair prepared for the blow. But at the last moment Phage's hand was grabbed by a girl and he exclaimed, Who else is she? Let her let him go. The girl apologized to him and said that she had to stop him. Phage tried to break free, but he couldn't and he thought, she seems to be a woman, but her hand is so strong. 
Suddenly his father's voice came from behind him. He called out to him and asked, does he think he hasn't done enough today? Phage turned around in fear and the Viscount turned to his guests, asking forgiveness for the trouble that his son had caused them today. It's his fault, he'll be stricter with him in future. As for the number that Blair mentioned, don't worry, their mathematical society will do their best to find an explanation. He thanked Blair for his explanation and said that he still had work to do and had to leave. He gritted his teeth and said that he hoped he would have a pleasant evening at his estate. Blair thanked him in return and said that he too wished him a pleasant evening. He thought the mathematical society could find an explanation. He doesn't think they will succeed so easily. The Viscount left, leading his son with him and thought that he did not expect that this break was disgracing their family. After that, Blair thanked the girl who helped him and called her mistress. She asked, did he say madam? Did he forget her? Is he that callous? Suddenly Isabella slapped him in the face and exclaimed why he opens his hands to strangers. Blair replied that he didn't do that at all. What does it mean to strangers? He didn't do anything to her either. The girl laughed and apologized for disturbing their advances, she was just joking. But they have such a good relationship, she's even jealous. Isabella exclaimed, who is flirting here? It's not what she thought. She called her Alice and asked what she was doing here. In response, Alice asked, did Brittany's teacher not tell them? She always participates in this, but she sees her here for the first time. Brittany said that the Alice family is very well known in the mathematics community in Yabo City and has been participating in the workshop on behalf of her family for many years. Alice extended her hand to Blair and said that she would introduce herself, her name is Alice. She is in her third year at Chandanasa Academy, Isabella's classmate. She's pleased to meet him, she hopes her joke didn't defend him. Blair reciprocated and Alice leaned over, examining him closely. Blair's gaze fell into her chest and she said that he performed great today. She sees for the first time how the Howard family has turned from arrogant and pompous to so pathetic. Can they study mathematics in depth with him? Blair apologized and said he had to refuse. Let her better ask the teacher for advice because he learned a lot from her. Alice smiled and said that he couldn't be figured out so easily. She said goodbye to him and said that when no one was around, they would chat some more. Blair said goodbye to her and Isabella indignantly asked what does it mean when no one is around, they will chat. Brittany said goodbye to Alice and Isabella told Blair that he immediately forgot about everything. She sees he didn't mind going with her. Blair turned around and asked why he should go with her. Isabella pointed her finger at him and exclaimed that they were all the same, they would see a beautiful girl and immediately run after her. Blair scratched his nose and calmly asked if she could compare to her. Isabella blushed and replied that maybe, and he thinks she's prettier. Blair confirmed her words and she began to feel even more embarrassed, thinking that he was such a fool. But if he meant not the figure, but the face, then it sounds good. Suddenly Calvin came up to them and greeted them. Brittany smiled at him and asked what he was doing here. Calvin replied that he was the main character of the evening. He could not even say hello. Blair replied that he simply helped them solve the problem, and at the same time mentioned one number. Calvin replied that the problem he solved and the number he mentioned were not simple at all. The Howard family considered the riddle of the seven bridges to be their pride. Today he said that this riddle has no solution. This has led to the fact that the position of the Howard family in mathematical society is now in great doubt. And the number he was talking about, the mathematical society solves complex problems with numbers, but now they cannot find only a segment using the number. Can this number really be found? If not, then the whole society, no, even the whole world of mathematics will be shaken. So he wants to ask him, who is he? Why did such talent suddenly appear only now? What is his goal? Blair smiled and asked what he was talking about. Everyone saw how Phage asked him to solve a problem, he just had an idea and voiced it. As for that number, this is pure curiosity. And didn't Howard say that he would definitely find this number together with the mathematical society? Calvin agreed and said that he had imagined it. Let him not worry, their society is always on the side of truth. But he better be careful with the Howard family. He is afraid, he should not compete with them. Meanwhile, the Viscount sat on a chair in front of his beaten son, who was lying on the floor. Phage was breathing heavily from the blows he had just dealt, and the Viscount's subordinate said that everything was ready, they could begin. The Viscount replied that they would wait until he left the estate. Just like before, let him make it look like an accident, no one should see it. His subordinate bowed to him and suddenly the Viscount's second son said that he was killing again. The blonde young man stood behind his father and smiled. The Viscount turned around and calling him Abel, asked if it was him again. The Viscount's subordinate looked at Abel in surprise and said that this was impossible, he did it with his own hands. Abel came closer and said that their surprise was normal. After all, he himself ordered, like this time. Abel approached Phage and the Viscount, jumping up from his chair, asked why he didn't die. Why did he appear again? This Blair, is he his man? Abel said that he is so cruel and sets a bad example for his son. 
The Viscount pulled out a revolver and told him to answer the question. Phage looked at his brother in surprise and Abel replied that he was asking too many questions. He doesn't know where to start. He stood up and said that he would tell. That young man named Blair is not related to him in any way. But he had an excellent reason to return. What will he do? He can tell him that he is going to completely change the Howard family. The Viscount asked again, is he going to change their family? Abel confirmed his words and asked what he thinks is the basis of their family. The Viscount replied that, of course, glory. Abel disagreed and said it was a hoax. The Viscount asked in what sense. Abel smiled and asked, isn't that so? He knew it himself, the problem of bridges could not be solved, and that was the number. In order to protect the glory of their family in the name of the mathematical society, he wants to hide this truth. All these years, when people appeared who wanted to reveal the truth, he got rid of them in various ways. Including him, even his own son was no exception. The Viscount shouted that this was enough. He pointed the revolver at him again and said that for the sake of his family he would kill him again. Abel said he had already crossed the line. Does he remember what he told him? The truth cannot be hidden forever. Someday someone will discover the truth and destroy this family based on lies. Today that guy named Blair has already done it. He brought them to light in front of the mathematicians of the entire city of Yabo. He can deal with him, deal with Blair. But can he really kill all the witnesses? He grabbed his father's revolver by the barrel and pointed it straight at his chest, and then said that if he could not do this, then tomorrow the truth would appear before the entire state. Their family name will be destroyed, and everything in mathematical society will be turned upside down. The Viscount's hand trembled and Abel asked if he could then support the existence of their family. The Viscount let go of the revolver and asked what should he do then. Abel smiled and replied that he would become the head instead of him, then he would change their family and Howard would continue to exist. He put his hand on his father's shoulder and said that he should know that except for him, no one will save this family. The Viscount remained silent and then his son whispered something in his ear. A few days later, Blair's house. Blair woke up to the alarm and thought that sleeping in this bed was so comfortable, there was no terrible smell like in that closet. He came out of his room and said good morning. He noticed a huge stack of papers on the table and was very surprised, thinking that it looked like she had been looking for the number all night again. After the seminar, news of the theory of the unsolvable problem spread throughout the mathematical community in the country, and the reputation of the Howard family began to be greatly doubted. But in comparison with the unsolvable problem of seven bridges, the number that could not be found in any way began to be called the devil's number in the mathematical community. What a cool name. Almost all mathematicians in society began to try to find the devil's number, but no matter how hard they tried, nothing came of it. This is understandable. In this world, mathematics has not reached the level where it is possible to express physical values, and physics is a completely new field for them. But even so, in this world scientists are highly respected, they continue their search even in the dead of night. He believes that someday they will be able to find the answer. Now it's as if they have found themselves in another reality, even if they make a lot of mistakes, but in the end they will reach the truth. He sat down at the table and began to read the newspaper. On the first page he noticed the news that the head of the Howard family had changed. Will the new head dissolve the mathematical society? Blair thought that leaving the mathematical society would be the best decision for the Howard family. But why would they take such radical measures? This new head seems to be out of his mind. And what is this new chapter? Brittany approached him and wished him good morning. Blair wished her the same in return and saw that she was standing in front of him in a nightie. She came up and asked if she hadn't asked him to wake her up when he got up. Blair replied that he forgot. Brittany pointed her finger at his cheek and said he was a naughty boy. He says this every time, and about that number, he knows something, but he doesn't say it. Blair blushed and asked her to stop teasing him. His nose began to bleed and Brittany thought, is he bleeding? What is she wearing? Suddenly she realized that she was standing in front of him in a nightie and shouted that he was a pervert. After that, there was a loud bang and now Blair's face bore a red mark from her palm. After that, Blair began to prepare breakfast and Brittany changed clothes and looked at him guiltily. She apologized to him and asked if it still hurt. She did it subconsciously. Blair said he noticed that when she first woke up, she was a completely different person. She pulled her hair into a ponytail and asked if he didn't like her this morning. Blair disagreed and replied that he liked her even when she woke up, even in her normal state. He added seasonings to the dish and Brittany was very surprised, and then thanked him and he, breaking an egg into the frying pan, thought that now he had definitely said everything correctly. She asked what he was cooking. Why does he fry eggs and red fruits, which can be eaten anyway, together? Blair replied that he was making an omelette with tomatoes. She asked again, omelette with tomatoes. He put breakfast on a plate and said that tomatoes are the name given to red fruits in his hometown, Almost everyone there knows how to cook an omelette with tomatoes. 
he thought that this was all he had been eating lately. After that, he left the house and said that he had already prepared it, let her try it, and he would go to class. She asked him to wait and then walked over to him and started wiping the crumbs off his clothes. Blair looked at her in surprise, and after that she said that everything is fine now, let him be careful. Blair left, and after that Brittany went back into the house and looked at the omelette and thought it looked strange. Is this really edible? She tried the omelette and was very surprised, thinking that she had never tried anything like it. The taste of tomatoes is so sweet, what bliss. It's incredibly delicious. After a while, Blair reached the academy and his stomach began to growl, and he thought that while he was cooking, he had completely forgotten about himself. He didn't even eat. After a while, girls crowded into the audience and one of them asked her friend, did she read the school newspaper? The head of the Howard family changed, he ordered the dissolution of the mathematical society. The girl replied that of course she had read, they say the new head is young and handsome, he is very mysterious. Their friend said with a smile that who is truly mysterious is the man who spoke about the seven bridges of the royal capital, mentioned the number of the devil, and then disappeared without a trace. Their friend wanted to ask who this man was, but her friend said that her uncle from the mathematical society said that he was about the same age as them, and he himself asked to hide the name. But how is this possible? He shocked the whole world with one word, and he is their age. She doesn't believe it. What if she says he's just a secretive old guy? Meanwhile, Blair was sitting nearby at a desk, and Isabella stood nearby. She turned to him and asked, is he listening to what she says? She asked him, does he really not know how to find this number? Blair replied that he said he didn't know anything. Isabella exclaimed that this couldn't be true, he was definitely deceiving her. Suddenly Alice entered the audience and asked Isabella, is she bothering her Blair again? She said good morning to Blair and then blew him a kiss and Isabella asked if she wasn't in her third year. Why did she come? And why is Blair her? Blair said good morning. Alice and Blair's classmates perked up. They looked at the girls and one of them said that these were the most beautiful girls of the third year, Isabella and Alice. The other guy said they came to Blair's. How did this guy get so lucky? Is he really that popular among girls? Jasmine noticed them and Alice leaned over to Blair and asked what they were talking about. About that. Suddenly Blair's stomach growled with hunger and he awkwardly looked away. He apologized to them and Alice left. Isabella looked at Blair and asked displeasedly, is he a pig? It's not even lunchtime yet. Suddenly Alice handed Blair a bun and said that she accidentally took an extra portion today. Will he help her eat it? Blair looked at the delicious bun with sparkling eyes and agreed, saying that she was a good person. But suddenly Isabella pinched his cheek and told him not to do it. How can he accept food from someone else? Blair replied that he wanted to refuse, but the bun smelled so good. Isabella got angry and asked if he was hungry, then why didn't he ask her? In response, he asked if she herself had not called him a pig. Isabella exclaimed that it didn't matter, it was his fault, she was the first to come. Alice told Isabella that Blair is a genius, it's normal that she shows sympathy for him and wants to help. Isabella gritted her teeth in irritation, and then handed Blair her food and told him to take it, she also took an extra portion, let him give this bun to her. Blair looked at the sandwich and agreed. Alice asked why she decides for Blair. As far as she knows, Blair is not yet in an official relationship with her. Isabella got really angry and then told Blair to choose. Will he take her sandwich or bun Alice? He can only choose one. Alice said that it doesn't matter what he chooses, the main thing is that he likes it. Blair thought he just wanted to eat in peace. Sparks began to sparkle between Alice and Isabella, and Blair just smiled awkwardly. Blair chose a sandwich and thanked Isabella. She was happy and said that it means he liked her sandwich better. Suddenly Blair stuffed a bun and a sandwich into his mouth at once and his cheeks puffed out, then he swallowed it with difficulty and said that the sandwich and bun were all delicious. Thanks to both of them. Everyone looked at Blair in shock and Isabella said that the sandwich was really so tasty, he gobbled it up so quickly. Alice noticed the remnants of cream on Blair's cheek and wiped it with her finger, and then licked it and said what he had left here, he's so sloppy. She kept licking her fingers, saying that her bun was so delicious, and Isabella exclaimed, what does that mean? Suddenly the bell rang and Alice said that it was time for them to go to school. She said goodbye to Blair and told him to study well. Blair said goodbye to her, and then Isabella pointed her finger at him and said that she had gone, and let him wait for her in the classroom after class. She left the audience, slamming the door loudly, and Blair sighed in relief, thinking that they had finally left. Suddenly his friend pinched his cheek and asked when he had time to meet Alice. Blair replied that a few days ago, in the evening. Toby exclaimed, in the evening. Blair asked what he was up to there. A few days ago, Brittany's teacher took him to a mathematical society seminar, where he met Alice. Toby asked, was he at the seminar a few days ago? Is that where they started talking about the number of the devil? Blair ignored him and said that Brittany's teacher had arrived. After that, Blair went to the board and started writing the problem, and Brittany said that they could try different methods of solving it, 
The most common method was this. Now let them divide into groups and try to solve the problem from the board. She nudged Blair with her elbow and called out to him quietly. He turned around and saw that she was handing him bread. Then she said that he forgot to have breakfast today. This is for him. Let him eat. Blair looked at the bread and thought that he had been given bread again. After that he joined the group and Toby asked where he got this bread from. Blair replied that it would take a long time to talk about this, it would be better for them to discuss the problem. Suddenly a girl from their group jumped up from her chair and told Blair that Toby had said that he had participated in a mathematical society seminar. Then he definitely saw that mysterious man. The newspaper writes that just at the seminar, in front of everyone, he solved the problem of the seven bridges of the royal capital, and then he talked about the number of the devil. Blair glanced sideways at Toby and asked, is this true? He can say what he saw. The girl tilted her head to the side and asked, can he tell? Jasmine looked at Blair suspiciously and he said that when that mysterious man appeared, he had just gone out on business. And when he returned, he already told about the number of the devil, there were so many people there, he didn't see him. The girl asked, did he have anything to do at the most important moment? Blair replied that he had eaten too much and his stomach hurt. There was silence between them and Toby said that his stomach hurt at such an important moment. He did not take advantage of this opportunity. The girl asked what he was talking about. In any case, Blair had the chance to participate in a mathematical society seminar. The most important people of the city of Yabo gather there, if he meets a couple of them, that's already wonderful. She smiled and asked Blair if he had any free time. Maybe they can do math together. She had so many questions. She has a very big house, if they get tired, they can sleep right there. Toby asked, is this how she wants to learn math? He exposed her. The girl exclaimed, shouldn't she study mathematics? All this time Jasmine was silent and scrolled through suspicions in her head. After finishing classes, Blair went out into the corridor and said that it's good that he is very fast, otherwise Isabella would catch him again. These girls are still annoying. He'd better practice magic, that's more important. He needs to keep his magic at a good level. Suddenly someone asked when he became so interested in magic. He saw a hooded man in front of him, and then this man put a weapon to his throat and Blair asked who it was. In front of him he saw Jasmine, who was hiding her face under a hood, she told him not to twitch, the dagger was very sharp. Blair raised his hands and asked what she was doing. She said that if she was not mistaken, then it was he who spoke about the seven bridges of the royal capital and the number of the devil at that seminar. And his skills in magic and mathematics have grown very much. He is not Blair, he does not have such talents. Let him say where is Blair. Who is he? Why is he pretending to be him? Blair replied that there were too many questions, he didn't know where to start. But first, he is Blair. He thought it best not to talk about the fact that he had moved for now. Jasmine exclaimed, what nonsense is this? Does he think he disguised himself so well? She started pulling his cheeks in different directions and said that any mask can be removed. But suddenly she was very surprised when she realized that there was no mask and thought, is she not succeeding? Blair hit her on the leg and she began to fall, closing her eyes, but she felt that she had not fallen and opened her eyes, seeing that Blair had caught her. She blushed slightly and they made eye contact, then she exclaimed, what is he doing? Let him let her go. Blair replied that he could let her go, but she should not put the knife to his neck again. He showed her the spoon she used as a weapon and said that one careless move and he would bleed. She's convinced herself that he's not wearing a mask, so let her believe that he's Blair. She turned away and told him to let her go. She pulled away from him and asked, even if he wasn't hiding, why did he suddenly become so good at magic and mathematics? Besides, his manner of speaking also changed. Blair replied that it would be a long story. He's Blair, but at the same time he's not. In fact, he slept for a long time, and when he woke up, he became like this. He comes from a world where there is no magic, but science is well developed. People there don't know how to use magic, magic for them is just an invention. In that world, science is so advanced that it surpasses even magic. People with the help of technology can do things that cannot be done even with the help of magic. With the help of developed science, people have been able to explore the distant worlds of the universe, they can even fly to other planets. In that world, he was just an ordinary math teacher, so he can use mathematical knowledge that is not even thought of in this world. Suddenly in his fantasy Jasmine raised her hand and called out to the teacher and Chen Luo asked what her question was. She asked, can they really cross the sky? Are there really other planets out there? He replied that she asked an excellent question, of course the sky can be crossed, besides their planet, there are countless others in space. Jasmine thanked him for his answer and asked why he suddenly looked so serious. Blair finished the story and apologized to Jasmine, saying that he accidentally said that. He cleared his throat and said that eventually, he woke up in a world where he became a mathematical genius and an excellent magician. But, unfortunately, he lost some memories. All this time Jasmine listened to him carefully and then thought for a second and Blair said that this is how things are. 
Jasmine agreed and said with a smile that apparently he really is Blair. As before, he loves to tell all sorts of tall tales. Blair asked, has he said something like this before? Jasmine confirmed his words and said that he liked science more than magic and said that he wanted to live in a world where there was no magic. This was probably due to the fact that he was not doing well with magic. He then cried in his sleep. So this is due to memory loss. Don't let him worry, she will help him get his memories back too. Blair took her hand and said that she cares about him so much, he is grateful to her. Jasmine saw what he did and said that she only agreed to help him get his memories back, let him not think too much. Blair asked what he could think of. Time passed, Blair returned to the academy and looked at his hands, then someone suddenly grabbed him from behind and hugged him tightly. Blair realized it was Toby and asked what he was doing. Let him let him go quickly. He sat down and asked why he grabbed it. Toby said let him tell the truth. Blair stuck two fingers into his nostrils and noticed Phage in front of him. Toby was surprised by his presence and then covered Blair with himself and asked what he needed. Phage said nothing and then bowed his head and asked Blair for forgiveness he did wrong. He, Phage Howard, sincerely asks for his forgiveness. May he forgive him. Blair was surprised and surprised students began to crowd around them. Someone asked, is this Phage? What's happening? Blair looked at Phage puzzled and asked, is he asking for forgiveness? The students are quietly communicating with each other, did Elder Phage apologize to someone? What did this Blair do? Now things are unstable in the Howard family, but why did the headman suddenly come to apologize to him? Phage hands over a decorated piece of paper. Lou Bayer asks what is this? He replies that this was passed on by his older brother, he has now become the head of the Howard family. His name is Abel, he conveyed this invitation. Tonight he gathers all the mathematicians in the kingdom for a conference. He wants to cover the topic of the Howard family's reputation at this conference. He bows and asks not to be angry with him. He asks you to forgive his rudeness and take part. Toby quietly says that he doesn't need to go there. Why did he speak to him so suddenly? This is definitely some kind of trap. Blair looks at the invitation and thinks about it. Some time later, many people gather at the Howard family's house and communicate with each other. Blair also goes with them and says that he still couldn't stand it and came here. He wondered how the new head of Abel would get out of this situation. Someone grabs his ear and he feels a familiar feeling. Isabella says that she knew he would come. And where did he go this afternoon? She told him to wait for her in the classroom after class. Brittany is surprised that he came too. She says that she looked for him throughout the academy. Blair asks the teacher if she also received an invitation. She says that news of the conference at Howard House has already spread among all the mathematicians in the kingdom. Almost all the city's mathematicians gathered here. Some even came specially from other places. But no one received any invitations. Blair thinks this is weird. Was he the only one who received this invitation? Someone gently touches his ear. Alice asks what happened to his ear. Is it all because of her? She can massage his ear. Isabella asks what is she doing here? She grabbed it easily. He wasn't in pain, was he? Alice says that he is all red, which means he is in pain. Blair thinks they're both here again. Brittany moves on and says that they should go because the conference is about to start. They listened to the teacher and moved on. Blair looks and thinks that the image of the seven bridges of the royal capital has already been taken. Brittany asks how Abel will manage to resolve the situation. He asks the teacher, does she know him? She says something like that. They were classmates, he wanted to become a teacher at the academy. But three years ago he suddenly disappeared somewhere. She was very surprised when she learned that a few days ago he became the new head of the Howard family. Blair asks what kind of person was Abel. Brittany wonders how to explain this to her and says that all he had on his mind was math. At the same time, he sits at the table in his office and looks at papers. Phage tells his brother that everyone has already gathered and is waiting for him. Abel asks has he ever fallen in love. Anticipation only increases the passion on a date. By the way, did that guy come? Phage says there are a lot of people there, he's not sure if Blair came. But he did everything in his power. Abel puts his hand on his shoulder and says that he can relax because he is not a father. He need not be afraid of him. He leaves and says that it is time for a new era for the Howard family. People in the hall communicate with each other. One of the guys turns around and notices someone or someone and says that he has come. Phage follows Abel down the hall. People are surprised that he is very young. Abel wishes the ladies and gentlemen good evening and says he is honored to have them attend his event. He bows, says his name and says that now he will represent his family. He wants to express his gratitude to everyone. Brittany thinks that he is completely different from three years ago. He dresses differently and speaks completely differently too. Abel takes out the book and says that they have all been waiting for this for so long. He is sure that they are eager to get to the main issue. But first they must let him tell them about his family's past. Blair looks at the book in his hand and wonders what it is. Abel says that this is the notebook of the elder of his family of the first generation. This book records the whole truth that their family was hiding. 
Like many other scientists, their ancestor went to the Seven Bridges to find a solution to the problem. He spent a lot of time there but could not find the answer. But the elder was not going to give up. One day, he finally found the right path. Excited by his discovery, he immediately told other scientists about it. On the morning of the second day he showed the path he had found. The elder was so happy that he did not even believe for the second time that his theory was correct. He immediately began telling others about it. However, late at night, he still decided to prove his theory. And then he realized that he had made a huge mistake. He did not find the correct solution at all, but simply took a wrong turn during his research. So he mistakenly thought that he had found the right path. The elder realized how big a mistake he had made, and in the morning he would have tarnished his honor in front of so many people. As a result, unable to survive the shame, the elder decided to throw himself into the river. With his death he wanted to atone for the wines. He left his notebook, where he described in detail everything that happened to him. In his notes, he called on his descendants to reveal the truth to people. But the elder did not expect that his descendants would not fulfill his wishes and would hide the truth from people. They decided to hide the book and tell people that the elder managed to find a solution, but the evidence drowned in the river. All this was in order to preserve the honor of the family right up to this day. But the truth cannot be hidden forever, his family will have to face the truth. Having finished his story, Abel bowed to everyone present. Phage is trying to say something to his brother. Abel says that on behalf of the Howard family, he would like to apologize to everyone for hiding the truth for so many years. People are surprised and ask, is this true? So this is how it was. So the Howard family hid it for so long. Blair thinks this guy is pretty determined. After it became clear that the problem of the seven bridges of the royal capital had no solution, it was obvious that the Howard family was lying. Now that he has revealed the truth, future generations will bear even greater responsibility, and for an elder from the first generation, the name Howard will become a shameful stigma. The girl asks, does that mean he dissolved the mathematical society to atone for lying? Abel says that, of course, this was the reason for the dissolution of the mathematical society, but this is not the main reason. The most important reason is the number of the devil. The girl asks, so he never found the devil's number. Abel agrees and says that he has not yet found the devil's number, but not at all because of limited capabilities, but because this number does not exist. People ask in what sense does it not exist. Abel says that, roughly speaking, this number does not exist in the system of knowledge that they have now. That's why he dissolved the mathematical society. Now they have no right to claim that everything in the world can be measured by numbers. The guy asks, so they can't solve the riddle of the devil's number. Abel says that's not true. The devil's number can be guessed, and someday they will succeed. It's just that now this is a completely new field of research for them. And the one who will be able to lead them into this new field is Mr. Blair from the Shandanasa Academy, who put forward the number of the devil. People start discussing with each other, who is this? This must be the young man who came up with the theory, they didn't think it was him. She was at the seminar then, and it was he who started talking about the number. Abel says that many of them probably don't know his name, all because he is very modest. So when he brought up the devil's number at a meeting a few days ago, he asked that his name not be made public. But now to step over this obstacle and enter a new field. He asks this gentleman to help him. Brittany asks what should they do. They notice that he has already disappeared and ask where he went. Phage tells his brother that he is not here. Abel says that he thought that he would break down from curiosity and come, but it seems he was mistaken. Sooner or later he will appear. After some time at the academy, students ask each other if they have heard the latest news. Everyone just went crazy. They say that the person who put forward the devil's number was Blair. She heard it too, and now everyone is urging him to find that number. Blair thinks that this able guy put it all on him, so now no one cares about the Howard family's problems. Toby points his finger at him and calls. He notices and says that he already told him, he left after he realized that the situation was heating up. He hasn't seen the rest, so he doesn't have to ask him. Toby points to something and wants to say something. Blair looks to where he pointed and sees history teacher Hank. The teacher says that he knows that he is now very good at mathematics. But what about its subject? He's never passed it yet. Blair says he will explain everything. It's just that the knowledge of history was very confused in his head. Hank slams his hand on the table and says he needs to remember something. Even if he is famous now, he is still a student and must pay the most attention to his studies. He shouldn't be so arrogant. Toby tells the teacher that someone has come for Blair. Hank asks why. Can't he see that he's talking to him now? Toby panics and tries to tell who it is. Hank says that he said that he was talking to him now. Now no one is interested in him, even if it was the deputy director. Does he understand this? Calvin grabs the teacher by the shoulder and says that he came for Blair. Hank panics when he sees the vice principal and asks why he's sitting still. He shouldn't keep the deputy waiting. After some time in the corridor, Calvin extends his hand and says that he has met him again. 
Blair asks Chairman Archie if he came to him. Is it because of the devil's number? Calvin says that the whole world is asking him to solve the riddle of the devil's number. Their mathematical society in Yabo City is also under pressure. He hopes that he can help them with this. Blair thinks about this. Archie says they really really need his help. Calvin agrees and says that it will not be amiss for him. Blair says he doesn't want to do this. Some time later, Toby opens the door to the office. Brittany is surprised to see him and asks what happened to him. He tells the teacher that she should go quickly. Blair was taken. At the same time in the meeting room, many people gathered at the entrance to the meeting room. Many people in magical robes have gathered in the crowd and are looking at Blair. Someone says there are four deputy directors. He understands everything because this student is a real talent and he is also their pupil. Blair says there are also more than 10 managers standing outside the door. Do they want to get him to agree? Calvin says he came up with the devil's number. He can't let down the entire mathematical community. Blair asks, does he always call truth something diabolical? A man with long hair asks this boy if he even knows who they are. Calvin puts his hand out in front of them and asks if the devil's number really can't be expressed as a whole number. Blair says there's more to it than that. They will not be able to express the square either with the number 2 or with the number 3 and 5 too. This value cannot be expressed as an integer. And there are a lot of such numbers. In addition, this can be proven using mathematics. This is all he can tell them now. Archie asks, so he means they've been wrong for hundreds of years. Blair says this is common because math is a science where they constantly make incorrect mistakes. Isn't that right? If you find a proof, establish a new type of numbers, expand the number field, then you can. Calvin says that he knows the method of proving and formulating such a number. He must help them and help the entire mathematical community. Blair apologizes and says he can't help them with this. He can understand what they are afraid of. They are afraid that the truth they have believed in for hundreds of years is not correct. They are afraid that they are going down the wrong path. Fear is normal. In his homeland, entire wars were organized in order to get to the bottom of the truth. Only if fear is unknown to them can they move forward and find the truth. They need to fight the devil step by step, overcoming their own mistakes. If he tells them everything directly now, it will harm the entire mathematical world. He believes that they can muster the courage to look fear in the eye and then they will overcome this difficulty. After all, people have always celebrated courage. Calvin is surprised by his words that people have always praised courage. Suddenly they all bow to him. He says he's right, they really went too fast. They are grateful to him for his guidance, the mathematical community will never forget his contribution. Blair says he shouldn't say that. Unexpectedly, someone breaks down the door to this office, throwing in a man who flew through the entire office and crashed into the wall, and this surprised everyone present. They all started looking into the doorway. Brittany uses air magic and creates very strong currents of this magic. She asks in a very menacing voice why they took him Blair. He raises his hand and tells the teacher that he is here. He was fine, they just wanted to talk to him. Brittany was very embarrassed when she heard him. She apologizes to the chairman and is going to explain herself. Calvin says that he understands everything, because this student is a real talent, and he is also her student. They went too far without even warning her. Brittany still feels guilty and doesn't know what to say. Some time later, she walks along the corridor with Blair. She turns to him and says that as soon as Toby told her that he was taken, she was afraid that they would do something to him. Blair says she doesn't have to worry, nothing will happen to him. Besides, there are so many students at the academy, they wouldn't be able to do anything with him. Brittany says that by the way, she has one question for him. Blair asks what's her question. She asks why he made this fuss about the devil's number. He asks, wasn't she there then? As is expected in a mathematical society, he simply asked them a counter question. But he did not expect that this question would be so complex that it would be called devilish. Brittany says that's not true. Does he like Isabella? Blair is surprised by her question. The following happens in the teacher's head. He saw that Phage was communicating with Isabella and decided to fight him for her sake. Brittany grabs Blair by the shoulders and says that he did a side maneuver and that's cool. He doesn't have to worry, she won't tell anyone. Moreover, she will support him. Blair says that's not true and she should listen to him. Brittany runs away and says that after studying he must return home immediately. She still has lessons, so she has to go. Blair asks her to wait. However, he realized that she would not listen to him and this shocked him. Some time later in the evening, he cooks food on the stove and thinks that he did not expect that the teacher had such an imagination. I will need to find time and explain everything to her. Isabella approaches him and asks what he is doing. Does he cook food? Smells tasty. Blair is surprised by her appearance. Brittany says that she called her. She wants to study the devil's number with them. They haven't had dinner yet, so Isabella will just taste his dish with them. Blair asks the teacher. Her element of magic is wind, right? Isabella agrees and says that the teacher is a high-level wind elemental mage. 
O says that when he was buying groceries, he thought that it would be nice to make a refrigerator. But this requires high-level water element magic. Brittany asks what is a refrigerator. Blair says it's an ice chest for storing food. He hands her a piece of paper, which she takes and Isabella comes up to her to look. They both look at this drawing. Isabella begins to laugh loudly and says that he is such a talented artist. Blair snatches the drawing and says he didn't ask her. This is called a drawing. She says it looks like something a dog scratched with its paw. Brittany starts using magic and asks if he needs this refrigerator. She creates a refrigerator from energy and asks, is it supposed to be like this? Blair touches it and says that's exactly what it is. How could she do this? Brittany says that as he sees it, she also has water elemental magic, so it was easy for her. Isabella asks how is this possible? The number of magicians who master two elements can be counted on one hand. Blair asks the teacher, she is so talented in magic, why did she stay at the academy? Brittany became a little sad and remained silent. She looks at the food cooking on the stove and says that it looks like the food is ready. Blair runs to the stove and says he forgot to turn it off. After that, he placed several dishes on the table. Isabella says it smells good, but looks rather strange. She had never seen anything like this. Brittany says that she used to find his food strange, too, but it's actually very tasty. She must try and find out. Blair says that these are all recipes from his homeland, it's normal that they haven't tried this. Besides, he hasn't invited her yet. Isabella asks how such an idiot can cook deliciously. She would rather die of hunger than touch this strange food. After a while they all ate. Isabella blushed and thought it was very tasty. Blair notices this and says that she said that she would rather starve. She immediately grabs his ear and pulls. She says it's not her fault. It's all because he cooked it too tasty. He says loudly that he is in pain. Brittany laughs looking at them. They both notice this and ask the teacher what's wrong with her. She calms down a little and says that she just thought they were a great couple. They both blushed hearing this. Isabella lets him go and asks who would even want to date this idiot. Blair asks who would want to date such an arrogant person. Brittany says she will be moving up to entry-level magician soon. What element does she want to practice? Isabella says that she plans to choose the wind element like her. Brittany says that although the wind element is quite strong, it will not help in battle until you reach a high level. Besides, the most important thing for a girl is self-defense. She may think about the earth element, because this element has the greatest protective power. Isabella says that she doesn't want to, because the magicians of the earth element have two scary outfits. Blair thinks this is a really good reason. Isabella grabs him by the ears and begins to pull. He turns to her and says that he didn't even say anything. She says that he definitely thought badly of her. From his glance you can immediately understand everything. Brittany asks him which element will he choose. Blair reflects and says that as a child he decided that he liked all the elements. Isabella grins and says he can dream further. Does he really think that he is so talented that he can master all four elements? Brittany thinks about it and says that maybe he can do it. Isabella is surprised and says that he just says whatever he wants. Why she too? Brittany doesn't let her finish by saying that when he casts a spell, a very chaotic and dense aura immediately forms around him. Perhaps he could actually control four elements at once. She stands up and says they will talk about it later. When the time comes, they will know which element to choose. Although they are with her to study mathematics, she could also help them with magic. They both say it's cool. Brittany says that, however, if they want to become great magicians, then they cannot rely only on magic. Although the gods granted them the ability to perform magic, the existence of spells and gestures means that magicians spend a lot of time activating their powers. To compensate for this deficiency, mages also need to train in martial arts to be able to fend for themselves when there is not enough time to activate magic. Blair thinks that with magic you don't have to waste energy on washing dishes, it's very convenient. Brittany says that martial arts are often much more useful than magic, and she hopes that someday they will become familiar with this. So before teaching them magic, she would like to show them martial arts as well. Blair wonders if the teacher really knows martial arts. Isabella tells the teacher that she already studied martial arts at home. Can she show it to her? Let him see what it is. Brittany agrees and says he should be careful. Isabella says that she doesn't have to worry because she won't be using all her powers. She thinks that even though he is better than her in magic and mathematics, she will definitely defeat him in martial arts. Some time later, they gathered in the hall and changed their clothes. Isabella says that very soon he will be crying in front of her. She starts running towards him. She runs up to him very quickly and before striking him, she warned him that she was going to attack. Blair managed to dodge this attack. She continues to strike, but cannot reach her target. He grabs Isabella's hand, which greatly surprises her. He was able to pin her to the floor by holding his hand behind her back. She tells this idiot that he should let her go. Blair says he will let her go, but she. Isabella suddenly throws a kick, but he manages to dodge and thinks that it was a sneaky maneuver. With very fast movements he spins it. 
She loses her balance and realizes that she is going to fall. She opens her eyes slightly to find out what happened. Blair caught her and didn't let her fall. He asks her for forgiveness and she blushes because of this. Brittany asks, so he studied martial arts. He says that it's not that he studied it, he's just very interested in it, so for some time in his homeland he practiced the art of Sanda. Brittany asks if he called it Sanda. She had never heard of this before. His homeland is very mysterious. Blair was embarrassed, realizing that he was acting suspiciously. Isabella grabs him by the ear and asks this idiot how long will he hold her. He must let her go quickly. He says that he forgot about her. She leaves him and says that if the floor hadn't been so slippery here, she definitely wouldn't have lost. Brittany tells him that this Sanda technique is quite interesting. He should try to attack her. Blair says that Sanda's power is difficult to control and he almost hurt Isabella. Brittany says he shouldn't worry and just hit as hard as he can. He agrees and says she should be careful then. He begins to run towards her very quickly. Brittany prepares for his attack. Blair blushes and remembers that his Sanda trainer once told him that if he competed with true masters, he would not even notice what would happen to his body. He misses with his attack and Brittany hits the back of his head. Blair thinks that until now he didn't believe it, but now he's convinced of it. She picks him up and places him gently on the floor. Isabella panicked and asked the teacher what happened to him. He is okay. Brittany turns to her and says that she is very worried about him, but there is no need to worry, he lost consciousness for a while and will wake up soon. Isabella blushes and says that she doesn't want this idiot to wake up. Brittany asks if she actually likes Blair, right? Isabella was very surprised by this and cried out in surprise. She says that's not true at all. How can he like this idiot? This is absolutely not true and she was definitely mistaken. Brittany says she doesn't think so, she's sure of it. Because she does too. She doesn't have time to finish because he turned over in his sleep and called the teacher. Isabella was surprised by this but managed to cover her mouth with her hands so as not to accidentally scream. He starts to wake up and asks what happened. After some time in class, Blair, all wounded, says that he is in pain. Toby approaches him and asks what happened to him. He slept in the teacher's house and also came with injuries. Did he have a hot night? Blair says he should shut up, he just fell. He thinks it's all because of this cruel woman. That night, Isabella grabbed his hand, pinning him to the floor and tells this idiot that he just woke up and in front of her eyes he is touching the teacher. Blair says he's in pain and she's going to break his arm. Brittany tells her that she needs to let him go. He didn't do it on purpose. Currently, Blair thinks that Isabella's technique is poor but she is strong and she actually broke his arm. But he didn't expect the teacher to be so good at martial arts. She probably had a very good mentor and spent a lot of time training. In this world, ordinary families do not have the opportunity to practice martial arts from childhood, let alone magic and mathematics. Is it really a teacher? His thoughts are interrupted by Toby who calls him and tells him that he has already mastered the technique of summoning two elements, which he taught him. Blair is surprised by this and asks if he really mastered it that quickly. Toby says of course it is and he can show him. The fire element of this world. He asks to hear his call. He puts his hands in front of him and directs his energy. He uses the fireball technique. Blair looks at him for a moment and asks why nothing happened. Toby says he should take a closer look. He moves closer and sees two very small fireballs. Blair pats him on the shoulder and coldly tells him that he must accept that he will never surpass him in magic. He thinks, was it a fireball? This is some kind of fiery speck. Suddenly someone brings him a big pie. Alice says that she found out that he broke his arm, so she brought him something tasty. Blair is surprised that she came. She asks, he didn't bring lunch with him again, did he? Or was it his classmate who ate everything? She gives off a very intimidating aura and Toby says he has work to do so he should go. Blair says he feels a little awkward eating her food. Alice sits down next to him and asks, wasn't it tasty? He says she has the most delicious food. Shouldn't she also need to eat? Why is she standing here with him? She says that she has a question for him. Blair says that she can ask, if he knows the answer, he will definitely tell her. Alice asks if he likes Isabella. Such an unexpected answer even made him choke on his food. He asks why is she suddenly asking such a thing. Alice says it looks like she's not alone. So what is his answer? Blair says that right now all he's thinking about is magic. She says that this is a very boring answer, but it's also not bad. She leans towards him and kisses his cheek. She leaves and Blair asks what is she doing. Alice waves to him and says that she will come see him more often. Some students look at him and think that Isabella is always with him, and now also Alice. He's a real heartthrob. After some time in the library, Blair wonders what Alice meant then. He doesn't understand it. He won't think about it now. On this floor he had already read almost all the books on magic. It's time for him to go to the second floor, it seems there are books of a higher level there. A library worker is reading a comic book. A handsome magician has fallen in love with her. Blair approaches her and says that he would like to ask. 
how to get to the second floor. Here is his ID. The girl looks at his ID and asks, is he a student? To get to the second floor, you need to be at least an entry-level magician. Blair says that he doesn't have enough spiritual strength to reach this level yet. Are there other ways? The girl returns to reading the comic and says that there are no other ways. Besides, how is he going to read high-level books? He starts to get angry and is going to say something to her. He is stopped by Jasmine, who tells Chen Luo that he hasn't been here for a long time. Can she help him with something? The girl asks her, so she knows him. He doesn't even have an entry-level magician's ID, but he wants to go to the second floor. She should consult him, and for now she will rest. Jasmine tells Chen Luo that in order to go to the second floor, you need an entry-level magician's ID, unless he can try to make a new ID. However, the probability of success is very low, she thinks that he should first increase his spiritual powers. Blair says he will do so. He just came up with one way to improve work with the element of water. Jasmine says that if he cannot get a new ID, he will be blacklisted and will not be able to use the library's resources. Is he really confident in his decision? Blair says she doesn't have to worry, she just needs to trust him. Jasmine considered what he said. She points to the stairs and says he should follow her. She goes into the office, destroyed after his last visit, and explains the situation. The man asks, some student decided to improve the magic of the water element. Andre says that this is probably just an excuse, he decided to deceive them. The water balloon technique has been around for many generations, there is nothing to improve. And some student claims the opposite. This is ridiculous. The man says that he should think carefully about this, because if he fails the exam, he will be blacklisted. If he decided to waste their time, he will be punished. Jasmine agrees and says that she understands this, but she believes him and asks him to let him try. The man says that then he can come in and try to prove it. Blair comes into the office and stands next to her. Andre asks how he has been doing lately. The man says that everything is as usual for him, he recently participated in a seminar. Blair greets them and tells them that his name is Chen Luo and he studies magic. He came to show them how to improve the magic of water balls. By following his method, you can greatly increase the power of this magic. Andre is surprised when he remembers about him and asks if it's him. He tells the man that he should listen to him, it will be better if they go to the testing room, last time this guy. The man was indignant and asked what happened to him. After that explosion, he becomes more and more cowardly. It's just a student, what is he so afraid of? The guy should try to attack him with his improved water ball technique. Blair bowed and said that then he will begin. He begins to release his energy and attracts this energy to himself. He opens his eyes and the element of fire and water is visible in his pupils. He creates fire and water balls in his hands. The man is very surprised by this and asks, can he summon two magical elements at the same time? Andrew uses the fire element of nature to protect himself. Blair combines the element of fire and water that he created. This creates a large amount of energy that spreads throughout the room. Andrew is shocked by this and says that this cannot be, it is happening again. Because of this energy, a very bright light illuminates everything around. The room around Blair was destroyed, but no one was injured. The man looks at him and asks him how he did it. Blair says the improved technique is quite simple. First he summoned a water ball and then a fire ball. Then he mixes it. Together they release significantly more energy than individually. The man wonders how this is possible. This student can summon two elements. If last time his fireball could be called luck, then this time. He tells Mr. Chen Luo that he should wait here for a while. Jasmine must take care of the guest. She agrees and after a while invites him to drink tea. Blair thanked her for this and says that she can sit down too, otherwise he feels awkward that she's standing. Jasmine agrees with Mr. Chen Luo. He asks if she is also a magician. She agrees and says that however, her abilities are not very good. It is very strong, last time they summoned such a strong fireball, and now they also summon two elements at the same time. Blair says that in fact, his abilities are not very good either, he has not even reached the initial level. And he produces strong elemental balls because his technique is different. He can summon two elements, but this has nothing to do with abilities. Jasmine asks did he say it has nothing to do. Blair agrees and says it's like doing two different things at the same time with your left and right hand. Then it becomes clear that it is possible to summon two elements at the same time. He starts drawing with both hands at the same time and shows this drawing to her. Jasmine says that he got a very cute cat and dog. Blair says it was actually a wolf and a tiger. She takes this drawing for herself and says that she can do two different things at the same time. At the same time in the office, the old man sitting at the table asks, can a student summon two elements at the same time? Are they joking with him now? The man says it's true, he saw it with his own eyes. He can also confirm his words. Andre tells Vice Chairman Elton that Brady is telling the truth. The same guy last time caused a very strong fireball. Not only did he show a simplified technique of magic, 
but he was also able to combine two different elements. Elton says that perhaps he can show them a new way in magic, but the question is how many people can use such magic. If this technique does not gain popularity, then what is the point? They urgently need to gather managers and employees. Some time later in the large hall of the library, people who were called here ask what is it, why were they all gathered here? Chairman Elton ordered everyone to gather to see the new technology. The girl thinks that she didn't have time to finish her manicure. And where did this jasmine go? She didn't even sweep up the seed husks behind it. Brady tells the gentleman that he has just introduced them to a new magical technique. And his technique has its own characteristics. It is necessary to simultaneously summon a water ball and a fireball. They called them all to see if the technique could become widespread. He asks them all to try using it. The man asks, do you need to summon a fireball and a water ball at the same time? Is this even possible? The girl thinks, is this a new technique? Is this the guy? It can't be, he's just a student. People begin to try to evoke two elements at once, but not many succeed. The man reads begins to use two elements and reads a spell, the element of fire of this world. He asks to hear his call. Come here. When he finished casting this spell, the water element in his hand simply disappeared. The man says that no matter how hard he tries, he cannot summon the element of fire and water at the same time. These elements have completely different methods of summoning, how can someone do something like that? People say that it is impossible to summon two elements at the same time. There's no way to do this. Brady tells the vice chairman that no one can do this. Elton says that if this is the case, then they should take him to Mr. Chen Luo. Brady takes him in and asks the vice chairman what he thinks about this. He says that apparently only he is capable of such magic. Besides, no one can do it. I guess I failed the exam this time. They enter the office and see Jasmine using two elements at the same time. In one hand there is a water ball, and in the other a fire ball. This surprised them all very much. She stops when she sees the vice chairman. Blair greets them and says that Jasmine is a pretty smart girl. She had already mastered his technique. So what about the exam result? Elton says that according to their decision, Mr. Chen Luo, at least three people are needed who could master the new technique. They gathered members of the Society of Magicians, and no one was able to simultaneously summon a fireball and a water ball except this girl. Jasmine asks do they mean he failed the exam. Elton says that this is not so, he decided to make an exception for this gentleman, since his new method could have a great impact on the development of magic. At the same time, he asks him to become an honorary member of their magical society. He hopes that he will accept his offer. Blair says it's a huge honor, but he has one condition. Elton asks him to tell them about it. He says that he wants Jasmine to become an assistant manager. She is very surprised that he started talking about her. Some time later in the main hall of the Society of Magicians, the girl who read the comic asks, did Jasmine get promoted to assistant manager because she helped this guy? It should have been her, that fool stole her chance. Where is she and that student now? The girl she grabbed says she doesn't know. The girl pushes her into two other workers. She realizes that they must be on the second floor. She must wait for her. At the same time, Blair writes something on a long piece of paper. Elton begins to read what he wrote and says that it is good. Now the copyright of the advanced water balloon technique belongs to Mr. Chen Luo. The right of representation remains with their magical society. Blair is surprised and asks if he said copyright. He wonders if there really is such a thing in this world. Elton says that their magical society will help him advertise his new technology. But if someone wants to learn this, they will have to pay money for it. They will give half of it to him as the copyright holder, and the other half will go to their magical society. If someone learns this technique on their own and does not pay, then they will find out about it. The attacker will immediately be blacklisted by their society. If there are aggravating circumstances, he may even go to prison. Blair thinks that he never even thought that in this world with such backward science, the concept of copyright would be so developed. Elton asks Mr. Chen Luo regarding the price of this technique, how does he look at the cost of 100 gold? Blair is very surprised by this and asks, did he say 100 gold pieces? He wonders, will it cost that much? Elton asks if he thinks this is not enough. This technique is intended for very gifted magicians. Most likely, if you raise the price, those who pay and cannot master the technology will be very dissatisfied with their society. Blair asks, is that what he thinks? Then let it be 100 gold pieces, as he said. But if society has problems because of this, then it has one solution. He thinks, is 100 gold pieces still not enough? That's why magicians are so rich, this is an excellent field for making money. He advises adding something at the end of the instructions. Elton asks what he wants to add. Blair writes something in a very small font and says that this technique requires high skill and magic. They should think carefully before purchasing, no refunds will be given. Elton takes a piece of paper and reads what he wrote and says that the right of final interpretation remains with the magical society and Chen Luo. 
What is the final interpretation? Blair says this means they are not liable. Elton says the amazing thing is that he thought everything through so much. He laughed and said that he did a good job too. Some time later, Jasmine points to the large hall of the library and tells Mr. Chen Liu that this is the second floor of the library. Blair looks around and says that it is much larger than the first floor and there is no one here. She says that this is because only magicians at the entry level can enter. Usually there is no one here. On the second floor there are not only many books on high-level magic, but also many new techniques. He can study all of this. She turns to him and asks what's wrong with him. Blair says it's okay, the assistant manager uniform really suits her. Jasmine blushed and was embarrassed, but thanked him for the compliment. He asks, are there any books here on increasing spiritual strength? She says that there are not many such books, but it seems that there was something. She searched the bookcase and says that she found it. This book is called Theory and Practice of Increasing Spiritual Power. Blair thanked her for her help. Jasmine stumbled on the step and slipped. She begins to fall, holding the book she just found. She closed her eyes out of fear as she fell. She opens her eyes and notices that Blair has caught her. He looks at her and asks if she is okay. She wonders why she is experiencing a very familiar feeling. The girl found them and looks at them with great anger. Jasmine tells Mr. Chen Luo that he can read, but she needs to work. If he needs something, he can call her. He says that he understood her. The girl gets very angry and thinks that she knew it. This fool is seducing him, really. She approaches him and calls Mr. Chen Luo. Blair notices her and asks what happened. Does he wonder what this woman needs? The girl says that she congratulates him on successfully passing the exam. She knew that he would succeed. By the way, can she help him with something? She can do whatever he wants. Blair wonders why she's getting closer to him. He says she should leave. His answer surprised this girl very much. He gets up and apologizes, saying that he was lost in thought and answered carelessly. He will say it again. Dear madam, could she please leave? He now needs to start reading books, which, unfortunately, he is unable to do. The girl apologizes and says that she was rude to him then. It was her mistake. He must listen to her. She will explain everything to him. She shouldn't believe the words of this Jasmine. She's not telling the truth about her. Blair sits down and says that she didn't say anything bad about her, but since she said so, apparently she often does something bad. And now he asks her to leave, or he will have to call Chairman Elton. The girl got scared and says that he doesn't need to do this, she's already leaving. Some time later, Blair closes the book and thinks that he needs to try the tips from this book. All magicians know that the level of spiritual power depends on talents. For more talented magicians, the level of spiritual power increases faster, and for less talented magicians, it increases more slowly. At the moment, magicians know two ways to increase spiritual power, meditation and constant activation of magic. The author of the book discovered that while learning new techniques, the level of spiritual power of the magician is depleted. But after resting, the level of spiritual power resumes and the upper threshold increases significantly. Therefore, he needs to constantly deplete and renew the level of spiritual power and in this way he can become stronger by overcoming the shackles of his talent. Then he will try it today. He had a chance to become a real magician. Some time later, Blair sneaks onto the academy grounds and, returning home, wonders why he feels like he forgot about something important. Isabella sits and says that she is so hungry. Brittany notices him and says he's finally back. Blair says he forgot to cook dinner for the teacher. She begins to demand that he prepare food. Isabella hits the table hard and asks where did he go? Why did he just come home now? They didn't eat anything all day. Does he want them to starve to death? Blair says that he went to a magical society on business. It seemed to him that the teacher could cook herself. Why is she so late and not at home? Isabella asks, hasn't the teacher told him yet? Starting today she is also moving here. From such unexpected news, he even dropped the frying pan from his hands. She asks what is that facial expression? Is he unhappy about living with such a nice girl? Blair, with a face filled with horror and shock, wonders what she's talking about. Didn't he hear? What is this anyway? Brittany says she didn't have time to tell him today. She will move in with them, because it's more convenient to study magic and mathematics. Blair continues to cook and thinks that not only did he have to take care of the teacher, but now she is here too. Isabella grabs his clothes and asks if something is wrong. Does he have any objections? Blair asks if he objected. He is in favor of her moving with both hands. She says that the next time he says something like that, he should make an appropriate face. Blair continues to cook and thinks that he needs to conduct experiments today. After dinner he will immediately start this, because it is important. After he cooked they began to eat. Brittany looks happy and thinks that she will finally eat. Isabella thinks it's very tasty. Some time later, she finished eating and was pleased that she had eaten enough. Blair says that if she's finished eating, she should wash the dishes. Later that evening, he says that he said that she should clean up her hair after she washes herself. He sees them changing clothes and is about to say something. 
She throws a slipper at him and he says he is leaving. Some time later, Blair is reading a book at the table and says that it's like he's taking care of children, he's very tired because of this. He slams the table and says that today he must learn a new technique. He will learn this firebird technique. Isabella comes into his room and is about to say something. Blair turns to her and asks what does she need. She asks if she can talk to him. He turns to her and says she can come in. Isabella sits on his bed and says that she shouldn't have thrown the slippers at her. Does his face hurt? Blair closes the book and says it's too late. Had she really come just to ask about his face? Isabella says she couldn't sleep because she wanted to talk to him. By the way, what is he going to do next? Blair asks what does next mean? Isabella is nervous and says that he should think about it. She has one year left, and he has two, and they will already graduate from the academy. Doesn't he have any plans after graduation? Blair says he hasn't thought about it yet. He'll probably stay at the academy to work as a teaching assistant. Isabella grabs his hand and asks if he wants to go to the capital. After graduation, she will go to the capital to the Institute of Magic. If he can get there too, he will have a bright future ahead of him. He doesn't have to worry, her father will help him and then they can study together again. She thinks that this way she can eat what he cooks every day. Even though he is stronger than her in both magic and mathematics, she feels very good with him. Blair turns away and says that sounds good, but studying is a waste of time. Now he just wants to stay at the academy and study magic. Isabella asks if he can study magic well at the academy. Blair says that there is a teacher, Brittany, and her talent and knowledge are enough to teach him. Isabella thinks very hard about the teacher. She raises her arms high and grabs his shoulders with all her might. She says that she sees that it is not a matter of magic at all. He just wants to stay with the teacher, not with her. She's annoying him, isn't she? He has to say, he likes the teacher better, right? She shakes Blair very hard and he asks for help and she lets him go. She doesn't need to shake it so hard. Bulan came into his room and asks them why they are still awake. She rubs her eyes and looks at them. She asks what are they doing. Some time later in the morning, they are all sitting at the table and eating their breakfast. Blair thinks that during the night he tried to drain his strength by learning new magic. This morning he felt that his strength had increased, which means this method really works. Brittany coughed to get their attention and said that of course she understood. They are both young, but they are still too small, isn't it too early for them to do this? Blair stands up and tells the teacher that she got it all wrong. Isabella just wanted to talk to him about plans after graduation. Brittany asks how. She must have really made a mistake. They shouldn't take it to heart. Isabella hits the glass very hard on the table and spills the contents on the table. She gets very angry and tells the teacher that she has a lesson soon, so she will go. Brittany was a little confused and said that she understood her. Isabella, running away, hit Blair and said goodbye to the teacher. Brittany quietly asks if they had a fight yesterday. He trembles in pain and says that this is not so. She puts down a large stack of papers and asks if he has time this morning. Could he take the article about the devil's number to the mathematical society? Blair carries these papers and thinks that the teacher has a great talent for mathematics. He only guided her a little and she herself did the research, found evidence and derived formulations. Thus, the devil's number will soon receive its solution. Is this the mathematical society? The building was badly cracked. Maybe he came to the wrong place. He goes inside and looks around. The man asks if he brought the manuscript or announces a reward, if it is the manuscript, then he must put it on the shelf. If there is a reward, then he needs to go to the manager in the second office on the left. Blair says he brought the manuscript. The man raises his head and looks at him. He recognizes him and is very surprised. He asks, his name is Blair, isn't it? He asks do they know about him. The man grabs his hand and says that of course it is, he saw him at the seminar. He said that the riddle of bridges had no solution, and also put forward the number of the devil. People crowd around him and say that it is really him. Can he give them an autograph? Has he made a new discovery? Maybe he can tell them about it. Blair leaves them and says that he just came to help the teacher take the manuscripts and he needs to go about his business. People say that since he has business to do, they won't dare detain him. As for the reward, he can come for it at any time convenient for him. Blair turns to them and asks what reward they are talking about. The man apologizes and says it was his mistake. He thought he had come for a reward, and he simply helped the teacher bring the manuscripts. Blair whistles and says that he remembered that his business is not that important. Could he tell you more about the reward? The man asks if he doesn't know about the Mathematical Society's reward. Society gives rewards for complex mathematical problems that have been solved. Scientists get paid for solving problems. The size of the reward depends on the complexity of the task. The minimum reward starts from 10 gold. Blair asks, this is how it works. He would like to see these problems. The man says that's good, then he can follow him. They come to a wall on which several sheets of tasks are pasted. 
The man says that their society now promises a reward for these tasks. These tasks were here even before the time when he came into society. No one has been able to solve this. He does not know whether he will be able to live to see the time when this will be decided. Blair inspects it and asks if he could leave it. He wants to think about a solution to this. The man agrees and says that if he needs anything, he can call him. Blair touches the wall and begins to gather magical energy around himself. The guy asks Deputy Andre, maybe they should keep an eye on him. The man says that under no circumstances should we be distracted now. After all, inspiration can descend on such a talented person as he is at any moment. If he loses his inspiration because they bother him, they will harm the course of history. The guy points to the task wall and says that it looks like Mr. Blair has already left. Andre is very surprised by this when he notices his disappearance. At the same time, he stands on the street and says that if you add up the money for solving all the problems, you get 535 gold pieces. Moreover, all these problems are so easy that in his world even first graders can solve them. He thinks that he doesn't have money to buy new magic techniques. He could not even imagine that there was so much gold in the destroyed building of the mathematical society. He doesn't want to accelerate the development of mathematics in this world, but they promise so much money. He runs away and thinks that it is better if he secretly earns this money. Tonight he will decide, and tomorrow he will go for his reward. Some time later, the guy sweeps and asks the vice chairman, Is Mr. Blair really that smart? Why then did he leave yesterday? Andre asks what he can understand about this. Those problems have not been solved for many years, even by the most famous scientists. Perhaps even a genius like him couldn't handle it. Suddenly he hears a very loud knock. Blair placed a huge stack of papers on his desk. He says that he has solved the problems, he has little time, so they should quickly calculate his reward. Andre reads what he brought and asks, is this a solution to what problem? Why is there so much here? Blair says this is the solution to all problems. This surprises Andre very much. He says that he has solved all the problems of the Yabo Mathematical Society. There are 23 of these problems in total. Some time later, Andre continues to read his decisions and holds his head. The guy tells the vice chairman that he has already checked everything. All decisions turned out to be correct. Andre asks if he really decided everything. He never thought that in his entire life he would be able to see such a miracle. People are also reading this and taking notes. They say it can't be. Who is he anyway? Andre says that it is unlikely that anyone in the kingdom of Lonan is capable of doing such a thing. This man can be called the god of mathematics. He cries and wakes him up. Blair wakes up and asks if class has started yet. He finally woke up and asked, have they finished checking yet? Andre bows and says that these are excellent solutions and there is nothing to complain about. His talent for mathematics is undeniable. Can he tell you what they should call him? He says they can call him Chen Luo. Andre says that since everything is correct, then this is his reward. In total it turned out to be 535 gold pieces. Blair says this is their first time collaborating, so 530 will be enough. After some time in the library, Jasmine asks Mr. Chen Luo what is this. She sees a large bag of gold coins in front of her. Blair says he wants to buy new magic. After some time in rainy weather, a man in armor rides a horse. He galloped to the palace of the head of the city of Yabo. The guards at the entrance stop this man and tell him that he cannot enter the palace. The man on the horse says that they must disperse, he has a decree from the capital. He needs to report this to the city chief. They let him through and he was in front of an important document to the head of the city of Yabo, Austin Clavius. He reads it and asks is it true. The soldier agrees and says that Baird is already in the city of Yabo. The capital confirmed this, but they do not know the exact location. The woman asks, Baird, is this the traitor who is a top-level magician? He had been missing for like three years, so why did he suddenly decide to come to Yabo City? Clavius says that he does not know this. However, with his powers, if he plans something, then most likely the city will end. Blair dropped his pen. He picks it up and thinks that although this magical technique quickly increases the spiritual level, it consumes too much power. He needs more money, because he has already learned all the new magic he bought. 500 gold is not enough, he needs to figure out a way to get more money. Toby says that since he moved into the teacher's house, he has become increasingly tired. Blair says he should leave him alone. They hear someone loudly discussing something in front of them. The girl shows the piece of paper and says that they should look, she drew a portrait of God. The girls look at it and say that it turned out beautifully and she draws well. They all look at the drawing and say that it is very beautiful. Toby says they're all crazy. Blair asks what kind of God is this? He asks hasn't he heard about it? Recently, one guy named Chen Luo appeared, he immediately solved 23 complex problems that scientists of the mathematical society could not solve for hundreds of years. Now everyone in the Lonan Kingdom talks only about this man. 
because his ability in mathematics is simply a miracle. Blair wonders what it is. Did they make him a god? Toby says he was nicknamed God Low. It seems to him that if he is so good at mathematics, he must be an old man, not a young guy. What does he think about it? Blair agrees and says that he said everything correctly. Toby asks, after classes in the evening there will be magic practice, has he decided who he will be on the team with? Blair asks won't he be with him? Toby says that he will not go to practice because his level is too low. He persuaded his dad to ask him to go to the academy, and besides, they say that in practice there will be second and third years. Some time later in the mountains of the Shandanasa Academy, some teachers say that the purpose of the practice is to develop magical skills in students. This practice gives them the opportunity to apply the acquired knowledge in reality. But they need to remember that while practicing magic is very important, safety is even more important. Therefore, most of the dangers in the mountains were eliminated by them. They need to be careful, they should not leave the surrounding mountains. Now they must divide into teams of three or four people. They will go to the mountains for one night, and tomorrow at noon they will have to return here, do they understand this? Isabella asks Blair if he understands everything. He agrees and says that he understands everything. She says now he has to decide. Will he team with her or with Alice? He asks, can't they all be on the same team? Alice grinned and said that he has such a big heart, he wants to be friends with everyone. She thinks that the idea is not bad and she is happy with it. Isabella is very angry about this, but still turns away and says that she agrees to this. They will all be together and see who wins. Blair thinks that finally she doesn't hit him. He says it's good. Some time later, he asks Isabella why she pinched him. He screamed in pain and says she did it again. The man stands near the cliff and turns around and tells Mr. Baird that the sun has already set. Baird stands next to the other men and says that they are finally here. This city will not see tomorrow's sun. At night on the Shandanasi Mountains, the white rabbit heard something and turned towards the sound. This animal concentrates energy at its mouth and releases a fireball that stops and dissipates. Isabella uses the magic circle and wonders if it was too weak. She says she succeeded, she can control this fireball. Blair agrees. He looks at the rabbit and says that it's just like teacher Anthony said. If you take away the rabbit's right to control the fireball, he won't be able to move. Isabella grabs him by the ear and says rabbits are so cute. Why is he holding them by the ears? Blair says he's hurt and she needs to let him go. She strokes the rabbit and says that he should not be afraid, she drove away this idiot. He sits on the ground and says that she feels more sorry for the rabbits than for him. Alice comes up to him and asks if he is in pain. He didn't catch the rabbit. To complete the practice, you need to catch him. Blair says everything is fine, everything has just begun. He still has time to catch it. By the way, besides rabbits, do other animals have magic? Alice says that of course it is so and everyone knows it. On the continent of divine grace, not only people have the gift of magic, most animals can control one or another element. But they usually only control one element, and they do not have more complex techniques. For example, rabbits can only control the fire element. They can also create water balls of the lowest level. And about the question that he asked the teacher Anthony, most likely, no one on the mainland will be able to answer him. Blair says he just asked. At the same time, Calvin calls teacher Anthony and asks why he doesn't patrol the mountains. The teacher tells the vice chair that he has been thinking about the question Blair asked him. Calvin asks, and what did he ask him? Anthony says that he found out that rabbits can spew fireballs from their mouths and asked him, why do people need gestures and spells for this, but rabbits don't? Calvin asks, so that's what he asked him. Now they both stand and think about it. He tells the teacher that he needs to go protect the students. Anthony says that he hasn't answered the question yet. Calvin asks what other question. His primary task is to protect the students, he must quickly go there. After some time by the fire, Isabella says he already touched it. So who has more, her or Alice? Blair says it's actually very difficult for him to determine. Alice says that then he should touch again. Isabella says she's right. Her rabbit is clearly bigger than hers, she has to admit it. Alice says let Blair decide that. Isabella brings the rabbit to him and tells him that he must give them an answer. Who has the bigger rabbit? The rabbit in her hands gets angry because of this attitude and begins to run away from her. The rabbit hid in a tree lying on the ground. Isabella is looking for her rabbit and asks where did he go. Alice calls her by name. Isabella asks what kind of hole is this? Maybe a rabbit ran in there. Alice says that she said that there is no need to be afraid of her. Suddenly they all hear a loud sound and feel an earthquake. Suddenly the ground beneath them begins to collapse. The girls were embarrassed because this happened unexpectedly. Some time later, Isabella crawls out of the ground. She grabbed Alice's hand and helped her get out. He put it on the ground and looks at the wreckage. She asks where did they end up. Alice has lost consciousness and calls Blair. Isabella shakes her and tells her that she needs to wake up. She puts her finger to her nose and realizes that she is not breathing. 
She lifts her head and performs artificial respiration. Alice opens her eyes and, getting up, begins to cough loudly. Isabella looks happy and asks if she is okay. Alice continues to cough and says that she is fine. She looks around and asks where they ended up. Isabella says she doesn't know, they came out of a hole inside the mountain. Maybe this is a mine. Alice says that she has not heard about there being a mine in the mountains of the academy. Isabella says there is a door there. Maybe they can get out there. Alice says she is grateful to her. Isabella looks at her with a strange face and it makes her angry. Alice asks what's wrong with her face. She says that it's nothing, she just didn't expect to hear words of gratitude from her. People standing at the collection point ask what kind of earthquake it was. They don't know the answer to this question. All the rabbits ran away and now they will have no results. The student asks the vice chairman, did they all fail? Calvin says that's not true and they should calm down. They will assume that an unexpected situation has occurred and they should not panic. Anthony tells the deputy that all the students have been evacuated. The earthquake was so unexpected that he and the teachers made every effort, no other students were found. Teacher Cook checks the list, they will soon know the result. At the same moment, several soldiers gallop on horseback and say that everyone must leave. All the students look at how these soldiers gallop towards the mountains. Anthony asks what are the soldiers doing here. Calvin says this earthquake must have happened for a reason. At the same time, Isabella opens the door and, looking inside, thinks that it is quite spacious. She sees a big pillar in the middle of the room and asks what is this place. She reaches for this pillar around which the symbols revolve. She says that it is a very difficult writing. She nevertheless touches the pillar and is repelled by very strong energy. Alice runs to her and calls her. She asks if she is okay. Isabella agrees and says that there must be a high-level spell cast on this column. Alice says that she saw something similar in ancient books on magic. According to legend, ancient people built a huge copper column with magical inscriptions. With the help of copper wires a powerful magical field is created. Isabella asks, what is this magical field for? Alice says she doesn't know, maybe it has healing functions, accelerating growth. Suddenly several copies filled with magical energy fly at them. It comes near them and it greatly surprises them. The man grinned and created a magic circle to attack again. He tells these girls that they are quite clever. Alice looks at him and asks who he is. The man says that he should be the one asking them about it. They're going to die anyway. Alice asks what will they do. Isabella says they need to attack. They both begin to read spells, the fire element of this world, they ask to hear their order, come to this world. They use a fireball and send it at him. The man creates a large shield and absorbs this spell. This surprises them very much and they ask, what was that? The man jumps towards them and with a kick he pushes Isabella aside. She stops after sliding a few meters and coughs loudly. The man is about to attack Alice and she immediately takes a stance to fight him. He very quickly makes a strong blow next to her head with his spear. She found herself pressed against the wall and looking at him in shock. She looks at the spear that is stuck in the wall next to her and is very afraid. The man grabs her throat with his free hand and she begins to choke. He lifts her off the ground. The man apologizes and says that he still has to kill them. He pulls his spear out of the wall and this scares Alice very much. She closes her eyes in fear. His blow caused blood to flow. As it turned out Blair stopped his attack. The man is very surprised by him. Alice looks in horror at what is happening. Blair was shot in the shoulder and there was a blood stain on his clothing. Isabella is happy to see him and says that he should be careful. The man is about to tell him something. He notices strong magical energy near him. Blair touches it with his hand and releases very strong fiery energy. The man wonders, is he using magic? This can't be. This guy doesn't even cast the spell. There is a very strong explosion of energy. The three of them are standing and the man was not next to them. Isabella runs up to Blair and says that his hand urgently needs to be bandaged. He says that he came through that hole and followed them. They'll talk about the hand later. He notices that the man survived his attack and has already stood up coughing loudly. The man looks at him and doesn't understand how he did it. Could this boy really be able to activate magic faster than Mr. Baird? They have already seen what is here, so they must die. He covers his spear with ice and begins to run very quickly towards them. The girls loudly tell Blair that he should be careful. While the man is running towards them, he's wondering if he's really going to fight back. He notices a magical explosion that occurred above him. He wonders, is this a water balloon technique? He didn't make any movements and was able to activate the magic. There's something wrong with this water balloon. He did not have time to understand what happened when he already found himself in a ball of water around which fiery energy was collected. There is a huge explosion and the man coughs up blood. The water ball disappears, and he leans on his spear and looks at it with rage. He gets up, but drops his spear. He falls to the ground because he loses consciousness and asks what that just happened. At the same time, Baird sits on a rock and watches something. The guy comes up to him and asks the gentleman what happened. 
Baird says rats got in. At the same time, several soldiers are riding horses through the mountains. A soldier galloping ahead orders everyone to stop. He gets off his horse and says that there is an underground passage ahead. Everyone must get off their horses and prepare to enter. The commander of the army of robbers is a well-trained royal warrior named Baird. He is a magician of the highest level. He is very dangerous, so they must be careful. The soldier tells the commander that he should look there. They see Baird standing in front of them on the road. He apologizes to his colleagues and says that the passage further is closed. The soldiers recognize him and say that he appeared. They must be ready to attack. All the people have taken out their weapons and are preparing for battle. The man tells Ethan that during the attack there is no need to follow him everywhere. There is no need to wander aimlessly either, did he understand him? The guy agrees with his uncle. The commander says that he is alone, so they must surround him. Some time later, the soldiers were defeated, they were all lying on the ground. One of them still survived and rose. He looks around and says that he was able to survive. He hears the commander calling his name. Ethan runs to him and calls his uncle. He takes his uncle's hand and asks how could this happen? What should he do now? The man says he shouldn't worry about him. He must take it and finish the task. Ethan took the item and tearfully tells his uncle that he can't. After all, he himself saw Baird, he alone was able to defeat an entire army. He even defeated the commander with one hand. And he'll even be crushed with one finger. The man loses consciousness and stares blankly into space. Ethan calls his uncle and asks him to open his eyes. He says that he will help him get out and he will live. The man quietly says that he must complete the task and save the city of Yabo. Uncle lets go and falls to the ground. Ethan begins to cry harder and calls out to his uncle loudly. At the same time, Isabella puts a bandage on Blair's injured arm and he asks if she could be more careful. She asks how he was able to do magic without a spell or hand gestures. How did he do it? He says that he just spoke and waved it very quickly, and she didn't notice. Isabella became angry and squeezed his hand tightly. Blair cried out in pain. He starts rolling on the floor and says that he is in a lot of pain. Alice says she should be gentler with him. Isabella says he didn't have to show off his skills, so he got what he deserved. Did she know what kind of column it was? Alice says that she doesn't know, but she can definitely say that she saw it in books. This column creates some kind of magical formation. Although they don't know the functions of this column, that earthquake definitely must have something to do with it. Also the man who attacked them, most likely this system is not so simple. Blair says that they should quickly find a way out of here and report everything that happened here to the academy. Let them figure it out themselves. Suddenly someone put a sword to his throat. This surprised both girls very much. The person standing behind him turned out to be Ethan. He asks who they are and what are they doing here. Blair, with a sharp movement of his hand, grabs the hand in which he holds the sword. This surprises him very much. He very quickly goes behind him and knocks him to the floor. Blair pins his head to the ground and says he has a partner. Isabella looks at him thoughtfully. Ethan says he has to let him go, if he doesn't it will be the end of Yabo Town. Blair is surprised by this and asks what he means. Some time later, Isabella says that she understood everything. So he's here to stop Baird from activating the formation. But he attacked them, and out of the whole army only he remained. Ethan says that in fact, a few days ago, they discovered that Baird had invaded Yabo City, but they could not find him. They also did not know what his plan was, and a strong earthquake had just occurred, accompanied by fluctuations in magic. They didn't know that Baird was really that strong. They all together are unlikely. Blair asks him to stop and says he has a question. Who is this Baird? Alice asks, does he really not know such simple things? Baird is the most famous and most dangerous criminal of the Lonan Kingdom, even small children know his name. He was once a general in the royal army. He is strong and not only in war, but also is a magician of the highest level, he has enormous magical power. He participated in battles on the border many times, earned many awards and became a hero of the kingdom of Lonan. But no one expected that in one such battle Baird, along with his army, would betray the kingdom. His betrayal led to the defeat of the Lonan kingdom in that war. Since then, Baird has been missing, although the king announced a reward for the capture of the traitor. But so far no one has been able to find him, they say that he is preparing to overthrow the government. Isabella asks Baird came to the city of Yabo because of this system. What is it for? Ethan says that this magical formation could wipe out the entire city. They are all surprised and ask again, can it wipe out an entire city from the face of the earth? Ethan says that this formation includes 118 columns, which are located inside the mountain. They do not know who installed it and why. All that is known is that this system has existed here for more than a thousand years. Ten years ago, the head of the city discovered this system and then convened a community of magicians to investigate it. Research has shown that this system exceeds the level of modern magic, the mechanisms of functioning and the method of activation could not be determined. They know that if the formation is activated, it will generate enormous magical power, 
which will be enough to turn the entire city of Yabo into ashes. Since it was not possible to safely remove this system, this place was declared especially secret until this earthquake happened. He doesn't know how Baird did it, but now the formation is activated, so they must turn it off and save their city. Blair says that he knows almost nothing about this system. How can they turn it off? Ethan takes out the item his uncle gave him and says that they will need it. They all look at this thing and ask what is it. Ethan says that although this formation consists of many columns, there is still one largest column. It is the key to activating the formation, and this piece was discovered next to the main column. The community of magicians conducted an experiment. As soon as this piece approaches the column, the strength of the formation decreases significantly. And if you place this piece directly against the column, the formation will completely lose strength and stop. Apparently, this thing was created in order to deactivate the system. So it was kept under lock and key in the capital. Blair says that if they find the main column, they can stop the formation. Ethan says that's their job. Only Baird is much stronger than they imagined. Blair says that if his entire army is defeated, then Baird took precautions. He needs to call as many soldiers as possible. He alone cannot cope with this task. Ethan says it's too late, they saw the column glowing. Most likely, within an hour the system will be fully activated, and then there will be no point in calling anyone else. Only he can save the city of Yabo, you just need to find that column. They are ordinary citizens, besides they are students, they need to get out of here and hide in a shelter. Blair says that he would not like to interrupt his outburst of courage, but his pants. Ethan lowers his head and looks at his pants and notices a large stain and it really surprised him. He is embarrassed and says that it just rained outside, so his pants got wet. Isabella says that their family, Clavius, defended the city of Yabo from generation to generation. She, Isabella Clavius, is obliged to fulfill her duty, so she will help him turn off this system. And before this pathetic murderer, for whom they promise a hundred million, she will not be afraid. Ethan asks, so she's the daughter of the city leader. Blair puts his hand on his shoulder and says that protecting the city of Yabo is also his responsibility as a decent citizen. Alice says that she will also go with them. Ethan was touched that they decided to help him. Blair asks if he needs to change his pants after all. He asks why does he even care. At the same time, many magicians cast a spell, the element of fire of this world. They ask you to hear their call and appear in this world. Fire rain technique. They fire several fire projectiles that hit the magical barrier. The smoke clears and, as it turns out, the barrier withstood their attack. The man tells the vice chairman that their magic does not work on this barrier. Andre says that they will have to wait for the chairman to return. Maybe he will do something. The man says that the chairman is now on his way from the capital. He will arrive only tomorrow morning. By that time, the city of Yabo will no longer exist. Someone says that the head of the city has arrived. Austin Clavius asks, have they not broken the barrier yet? The man says they are still trying. The head says that the vanguard is already behind the barrier. They have a tablet with writing. And now they can only hope that everything will work out for them. At the same time, Ethan says it's very dangerous here. Blair suddenly hit him on the head. He asks why did he hit him. There are cobwebs there, isn't he afraid of spiders? Behind him a spider descends on a web. Ethan grabs this pawn and looks at it. He got very scared and ran forward. Blair asks, are all the soldiers of the royal army like this? Isabella says that he's probably the only one with a quirk. Ethan stepped on a hidden slab on the floor and activated some kind of mechanism. Blair grabs him by the clothes. He pulls him back and something flies next to him. Ethan notices the hole where this arrow came out. He thinks there are a lot of traps hidden here. He thanked him for saving him. Blair says there are traps everywhere, they have to be careful. And why does it seem to him that the further they go, the more they move away from the goal? Probably no one has been here for a long time. Is he sure that this road leads to the column? Ethan says he doesn't have to worry, the path is definitely right, he has the route in his head. Soon they will go along a secret road that no one knows about. They ask, is there a secret road here? Ethan says that there are several paths leading to the room with the main pillar, but they all go through the main gate to the room. Baird is definitely guarding the entrance, if they have to fight him, they won't be able to win. So he will lead them along a secret road that does not go through the main gate. They will enter the room quietly, attach the piece to the column and complete the task, and Baird will not even notice anything. Blair says he has a question. How does he know about this secret road? Ethan says he is a history graduate and can read ancient texts. After he became a soldier, he read all the books in the palace, and in one of these books there was a map. So he is well prepared for this task, he was taken because he knows the way. Blair asks if he was in the history department, then why did he join the army? Ethan says it's hard for historians to find work, and his uncle served in the royal army, so he got him a job here. In fact, this is his first assignment. Blair says it's so hard to find a job here, just like in his world. Some time later, Ethan touches the wall and says that he found what they were looking for. 
He clicks on the secret plate and says it's here. From here they can go to the main room. At the same time, someone tells Mr. Baird that the barrier outside works perfectly, they still haven't been able to destroy it. Baird says the formation's defense system is very good. Who could have come up with this at that time? By the way, Sid hasn't arrived yet. The man says he went off to patrol the western sector and never returned. Baird thinks about the western sector and says that it seems that there is another rat. At that time, Blair walks ahead with a lantern in his hand and leads everyone. He opens the stove and looks around. He removes the stove and says that there is no one outside, which means Baird is definitely at the entrance. They get out and think it's very spacious here. Ethan is glad that they were finally able to get out. Isabella asks why there is no column in this large room. There is only this ball of energy. Ethan says that originally there was a column here, probably this energy ball appeared after the activation of the magical formation. Here it is written how to raise the column. He reads this inscription in an unknown language. A column appears from under the floor. Ethan says it will take a few minutes for the column to rise completely. Alice says that everything is much better than they expected. It's good that he led them along the secret path. He is so cowardly, but why is he still so insistent on completing this task? After all, he would have run away long ago. Ethan asks if she said he was a coward. He is a Yabo City soldier and always puts the safety of the citizens first. Therefore, he must complete the task, protect. Blair hits him on the head and tells him that he should speak normally. Ethan agrees and says it's actually because of his uncle. His dad died when he was very young. His uncle raised him and sent him to study, he became a second father to him. Baird killed him and the rest of the soldiers along with him. When his uncle was dying, he told him to complete the task and give him the fragment with the inscriptions. And also, my uncle's only daughter lives in the city of Yabo. Now he is gone, and he must protect his daughter. Therefore, he would never allow this formation to be fully activated. Blair approaches him and says that he was thinking of something. Could it be that he just likes his daughter? Ethan blushed and said that this is not true at all, he is not a match for her. The girls grabbed Blair by the ear and wounded arm. Isabella asks, is he usually always stupid, but now he has suddenly become so insightful. Alice asks if he was really pretending to be an idiot all the time. Blair says he's hurt and he wasn't pretending to be anyone. He notices the small painting Ethan is holding and asks what is it. They took a small painting and Ethan says that this is his uncle's daughter, her name is Lena. As soon as he finishes the task, immediately. Isabella says that this girl is very beautiful. Did he draw this? Blair grabs his hands and says he shouldn't say that. Something could happen to him, did he understand? Ethan is surprised and asks what he means. He says that in his homeland they say that, he must remember his words. Until he finishes the matter, he should not say that he will marry the girl or that he will confess his love to her. He shouldn't show it to anyone, okay? Ethan asks did he say get married and not show? He seemed to understand it. Alice asks why she has never heard of this. Isabella says that she shouldn't pay attention. He says something strange all the time and no one understands anything. At this moment the column rises completely and makes a loud sound. Ethan says it's already over. He's activating the seal now, so they need to be ready for that. Blair asks if he called it a seal. Ethan says that to prevent Baird from discovering the fragment until it was attached to the pillar, a simple magical seal was placed on it. If you put a little spiritual power into it, it will open. After this, the formation must react. Most likely, Baird will also find out about the existence of this fragment, so he needs to act very quickly. The fragment in his hand begins to emit strong energy. The magical core also begins to emit this energy. Ethan attached the fragment to the pillar and says that as soon as he attaches the fragment, they should immediately run away. He is shocked by what is happening. Suddenly a strong explosion of fiery energy occurs next to them. This greatly surprises the students of the academy. This explosion throws Ethan back and he falls to the floor and next to him lies the fragment that his uncle gave him. Baird holds the flame to his hand and says that this is where he met these little rats. Ethan sits up and calls his name. Isabella and Alice glance at each other. They create fireballs behind their backs and quietly read spells, the element of fire of this world. They ask to hear their call and come to this world. They both release their fireballs at him. Baird doesn't react to this and their fireballs simply disappear before reaching him. Alice says that his spiritual power is far superior to theirs and he can control their attacks. Isabella asks did their fireballs just disappear? Baird wonders what's happening. Blair released his fireball, which was able to reach him. He says that he was still able to dodge, he had a very good reaction. One of the traitors is worried about his master. Baird says everything is fine. He thinks this guy didn't use any spell or gestures. Where did he get the magical energy from? Moreover, his spiritual powers are quite unusual. He doesn't look strong, but he can't control him either. Blair tells the girls that they must take the fragment and he will hold Baird. He releases several fireballs. Baird says he doesn't really use any spells or gestures. He doesn't want to believe it, 
but it seems like this guy. He blocks his attack using a fire shield and thinks that he can activate magic just like that. Two men grab the girls and pin them to the floor. Isabella reaches for the fragment and says that there is only a little left. Blair uses two different elements and says it looks like he'll have to kill him first. Baird wonders, is this a water balloon technique? But why does he still have the fire element? Blair fires two magic balls and it creates a very large explosion. The man looks at this and asks, was this power due to the fireball technique? Blair asks if he really succeeded. Baird breaks through this spell with his fist and as he strikes, he says that he should not become arrogant. He throws another punch and says that he activates magic very quickly, but his technique suffers. Before attacking the enemy, you need to find out his weaknesses. In addition, he is completely unprepared for unexpected enemy attacks. Blair falls to the floor after several of his attacks. Baird says that although he has great talent, he knows nothing about fighting. If he had been on the battlefield, he would have been dead long ago. Ethan gets up with difficulty and says that he doesn't understand anything. Baird turns to him and is surprised by this. With an embittered face, he clutches in his hand the fragment that his uncle gave him. He raises his hand with all his might and squeezes this fragment very tightly. He begins to move towards the column. Baird calls Oslo loudly and the guy is about to throw a spear at him. Blair opens his eye and says loudly that he must duck. He calls him and Ethan plunges into his memories. He remembers what happened in his childhood. He tells his uncle that he said that Uncle Jason is a hero. Is it because he is strong? Uncle says that's not true, he's not strong at all. Uncle Jason was physically very weak. He can't imagine how many times the commander scolded him, besides, he was quite cowardly. If you frighten him, he immediately ruins his pants. Ethan asks why does everyone think he's a hero then? His uncle pats him on the head and says that because he sacrificed his life to save others. Everyone in this room is shocked by what is happening and they call Ethan. Absolutely all eyes are directed at him. Ethan was pierced by a spear and tearfully tells his uncle that he did it. He remembers that his uncle said that even an ordinary person is capable of incredible things, and then he becomes a hero. He was able to place the fragment in the right place. The man asks, has the system really stopped working? The girls cry and call Ethan. Oslo says he didn't even try to dodge the weapon he threw at him. Baird walks over to Ethan's body and says he's dead. Oslo restrains Blair and tells him he can't move. The man tells the gentleman that it seems that the magical system has stopped working. What should they do now? Baird holds up Lynn's bloodstained painting and says they lost. He looks at the column, which begins to lose energy, and says that this young soldier deliberately did not dodge the spear and accepted death. He chose to sacrifice his life to deactivate the device. They greatly underestimated him. This time they lost. Donkey asks the master why not resort to another plan. Baird turns to them and says that he knows what he wants to say. But he said that they do not understand that method well enough. Most likely, they will simply sacrifice their lives in vain. People kneel down and tell the master that if they were so bad, they would not be able to follow him all this way. If there is even a shred of hope, they want to try. They must take revenge for everything that happened to them. Even the slightest hope is enough for them to try. They tied Alice and Isabella to chairs. They lead Blair tied up and throw him to the floor. Alice asks if he's okay. Isabella calls his name. He turns to them and says that he is fine. Oslo tells the master that they are ready and he must give the orders. Baird says that then they must help him one last time. All men agree to this. The column continues to glow with magical energy. The men gather around the column and channel energy into the magical core. Blair looks at this and asks what are they doing. Alice says it's like the long-lost magic of sacrifice. They donate their spiritual powers to the magical order to reactivate it. But then they will not be able to regain their strength. Their souls and bodies will be completely destroyed. The column begins to emit very strong energy. Andre asks, has it really started again? The man tells the chief that the barrier suddenly began to weaken, they increase the intensity of the shelling. It seems that it is possible to break through this, but for some reason now the barrier has been restored. Austin says something happened inside. At the same time, Baird says it's working again, they did it. The men's bodies begin to disappear, and they say goodbye to the master. Baird says goodbye and says that they can go in peace, he promises them that the city of Yaba will be destroyed. Oslo thanks him for this. Alice says that the magic system is activated again. Isabella asks loudly why they are doing this. Why did they start all this? Does he even understand what he's doing? He will destroy the city of Yabo, but several hundred thousand people live there, he wants to kill them all. Thinks he is doing something great. Baird cries and says she's right, he doesn't think they're doing good at all. They're just a bunch of crazy people filled with rage. Isabella asks, then why are they doing all this? Baird says that there is still half an hour before he and the entire city will soon be wiped off the face of the earth. So he will tell them his story. It's a very long story. Where should he start? He begins to remember what happened a long time ago. 
Oslo tells the commander that they are out of arrows and only have enough food left for half a day. Baird says that apparently they will have to leave the encirclement, they cannot die here. You need to deliver information about enemies. Oslo asks the commander if he really thinks they are telling the truth. The kingdom has already recognized them as traitors. Doesn't he think it's strange? They fought the enemies for 10 days, but no reinforcements arrived. It is rumored among the soldiers that no reinforcements were sent to them at all. Probably, the rich nobility considers him too important a person, so they took advantage of the chance. Baird slams his staff on the floor and says he must shut his mouth. Does he himself understand what he is saying? These are just enemy tricks. Oslo is going to object to him. Baird says he has to stop. They are fighting for the safety of their homeland. He believes that their homeland will not betray them. If someone wants to capitulate, he will understand. He won't pay attention to it, and he trusts that his people will follow him. Sid says he believes him and will follow him. Oslo says that he also believes the commander. The soldiers tell the commander that they believe him and ask him to take them with him. Baird says he's grateful then. They don't have to worry, the kingdom won't abandon them. Everyone must follow him into the attack. Three days later in the city of Yabo, a man standing on the wall notices a crowd of people coming towards them. Baird falls to his knees and says that they are finally back. After these words he falls to the ground. The guard says that it looks like these are their soldiers, they should quickly look. After some time in prison, Baird sits in prison and loudly says that he is the commander of the royal army. They need to let him out, he needs to be told something. A man comes up to him and asks did he say royal army? He's a traitor now, okay. His wife and child have already been punished according to the law, and tomorrow he will go after them. Such is the fate of traitors. Baird remembers Lisa and asks how did this happen? He did not betray his homeland, they should release him. They must give him Lisa and Gwen, he did not betray his homeland. The man says that all these soldiers are his too. He knows that he did not betray his homeland, so what? Someone upstairs wants him dead, so he must die and his whole family will also follow him. He said everything he had to. They will see each other tomorrow at the execution. Baird loudly says that he must return. He did not betray his homeland. He must stop. He falls to the ground because he was completely broken. A prison guard notices something strange. Suddenly someone gets into his throat and kills him. Someone opens one of the cameras. Sid tells the commander that they have come for him. They escaped from a nearby prison. They actually recognize them as traitors. Baird sits against the wall and says something inaudibly. Sid calls the commander. The guard says loudly that apparently they are here. They need to search everything here. Sid says they came for them. He picks up Baird and says that they must take the commander to safety. The man says that they should take the commander and they will cover them. The next day, some say that Baird was once a war hero and the pride of the Lonan kingdom. But he betrayed the faith of their citizens, conspired with their enemies and gave them secret information, after which their soldiers died senselessly. Yesterday, Baird and his army invaded the city of Yabo to carry out a coup, but he was caught by the valiant soldiers guarding their city. At night he continued his resistance, mercilessly killing their guards and escaping from prison. Although their soldiers responded in time and were able to catch the three, leader Baird still managed to escape. Now, according to the laws of the kingdom, these three criminals will be executed. The mechanism begins to move and three people are hanged. Sid says that this is just terrible, this herd of idiots is also rejoicing. What do they even understand? Oslo says that the gates are already open, they need to leave the city, it's not safe here. Baird quietly says they should leave. They are both surprised and ask the commander, did he wake up? He says that they should leave here because he wants to be left alone. He stands at the grave and apologizes to Lisa and Gwen. The man asks the commander what should they do now. Baird says they shouldn't call him that, he's not their commander now. This greatly surprises the soldiers. Baird says that this state betrayed them, now it has become their enemy. They must pay for all the suffering they have endured. Do they still believe him? The students open their eyes. Alice asks was it an illusion? Baird says that's not true, they saw parts of his memories. He used synchronization magic on them, allowing them to share memories. Alice asks if he really knows such an ancient type of magic. She and Isabella notice that something is happening to Blair and they ask what happened to him. They must wake up. Suddenly he opens his eyes and screams loudly. Isabella says that he finally woke up, he really scared her. Blair cries, opening his eyes. Baird says he seems to have delved deep into his memory than anyone else. Was he able to see other memories? Lulea remained silent and turned away from him. He stands up with the help of his staff and says that he did not want to violate his boundaries, it will all end soon anyway. Before joining the royal army, he served for some time in the defense of the city of Yabo. It was then that he learned about the existence of this system. That's why he decided that after he took revenge on the kingdom, he would lead them to this place. In the basement they found many ancient records, it took a lot of time to study this. From ancient books they learned several types of ancient magic. 
for example, how to manage the system and also studied history. In ancient times, a war broke out between their ancestors and the inhabitants of the city of Yabo lost in this war. Then they established this self-destructive magical system, turning their home into a trap to die along with their enemies. They don't know how it all ended. Whether they won or died, they will not know either. But he is sure of one thing, from the time of installation until these days, this system has never been activated. As soon as it is activated, it immediately produces incredible magical energy. It is capable of destroying all life in the city of Yabo. In an instant, all people will be wiped off the face of the earth without having time to understand anything. Alice asks him to wait and says that she understands that he has suffered a lot in his life, but he cannot carry out his revenge at the cost of the lives of ordinary people. Baird asks if she doesn't understand. She shouldn't make him laugh, sometimes he doesn't even understand himself. Blair says loudly that this won't help. He wants to take revenge not only on the kingdom and noble families, but also on all the inhabitants who rejoiced when his comrades were executed. Simply put, for him there are no innocent people. Baird says it seems to have burrowed deep into his memory after all. He points his hand towards the column. His hand passes through magical energy and he touches the column. At the same moment a very strong magical explosion occurs. The man says that it looks like the magic system has already been activated. Brittany notices something in her window. She asks is there an earthquake starting? This is not so, because she senses very strong fluctuations in magic. The column begins to release strong magical energy. Isabella says she couldn't do anything. She apologizes for getting them into this. She's going to tell Blair who she really is. He says she shouldn't talk. When he deals with him, then they will talk. Isabella is very surprised by what he just said. Baird calls the names of his warriors and says that they must see if their wrath will finally fall on the kingdom. He says that he will activate the formation. At the same moment Blair punches him in the face. With this attack he knocked him to the ground. The girls were very surprised by this. He apologizes and says that he has to stop him. At the same time, Andre asks, has it stopped? The soldier says that it already seemed to him that they were finished. Austin stares at the magical energy. The man turns around and asks what is it? Is this Brittany? She says that there are very strong fluctuations in magic on the back slope of the mountain. Her students were inside for a practical lesson. Where are they now? The man says that all the students were sent home. She's a member of the magical society, right? It's very dangerous here, she shouldn't be here. Brittany asks if the students were sent home. But Blair and Isabella did not return. At least two students were still not out. They're still there. The man asks, did she say about the daughter of the city mayor? Austin wonders, is Isabella still there? He remembers that once in childhood she said that when she grew up, she would join the city defense. He asks why did she want that? Isabella says that because she is from the Clavius family and will protect the city and him. Austin laughs and asks, will she protect him too? In the present, he wonders, is she now fighting for their city? Baird asks how he was able to free himself. He thinks he was so busy activating the formation that he didn't even notice him approaching. Blair says he should ask the soldier he killed. Some time ago, he asks what is this? Ethan gives him a small knife and says it's a city guard tradition. He must put it under his clothes and if something happens, he will be able to get it out. Blair asks he gave him the knife, but what about him? Ethan turns to him with a smile and says that he doesn't have to worry, he runs pretty fast, he'll need it more. Baird looks at his body and turns around and says that he forgot about the tradition of the city guard. He was a worthy soldier. Even though he entered his memories, he still decided to stop him. Blair takes a stance and agrees with him. Bear says that means they have different ways of thinking. He takes back his words, he knows something about war. They must stop talking and decide everything on the battlefield. He casts a spell, the element of fire of this world. He asks to hear his call and appear in this world. Alice says that he should be careful because he is very powerful in magic. Blair says they don't have to worry, he's already figured out how to defeat him. Baird uses the fire rain technique. He fires multiple fire projectiles and Blair surrounds himself with a magical barrier. Fire projectiles hit the barrier and dissipate. This really surprises the girls. He thinks that as he expected, even though it is a magical fire, this fire also needs oxygen. If he finds a way to suck all the oxygen out of the air around him, then the fire will have no effect on him. Baird wonders if his magic didn't work because he controls his element. He doesn't have that kind of spiritual power, what happened then? He turns around and notices something. Fiery magical energy is approaching him very quickly. He blocked that attack and thinks he didn't make a mistake, he actually uses magic without spells or hand gestures. Blair quickly comes running to him and says that it seems that he, too, was not sufficiently prepared for the approach of the enemy. He punches him in the face. With this attack he threw back Baird and knocked the staff out of his hands. He thinks he shouldn't have the chance to react. He catches his staff and understands that magic remains on this staff. Baird takes the sword and says that he is a very one-sided thinker. He still hid his sword in this staff. 
He never thought it would come to this. He imbues his sword with magical energy and strikes Blair's already wounded arm. He falls to the ground and grabs his wounded arm. Baird steps on his injured arm and says that he surprised him, he has abilities that he cannot understand, and he is a fast learner. However, he still lacks decisiveness. He had the opportunity to kill him. He raises his sword and says that he must remember that on the battlefield, it is an honor to kill a worthy opponent. At the moment when he almost struck with the sword Blair asks, and that's all. Baird turns around and notices two fireballs released by the girls. The balls collide and a strong explosion occurs. Isabella says that members of the Clavius family will never run away from the battlefield. Blair creates a magic circle and thinks they're great. He needs to pump out oxygen. Baird notices the magical currents he created and wonders what it is. He drops his sword and realizes that he cannot utter a word and he cannot breathe either. What did he even do? Blair approaches him and apologizes and says that he was right in saying that it is an honor to kill a worthy opponent. Baird says with all his might that he has failed them again. He falls to the floor and gasps. The girls run up to him and say that he is wounded. Blair says he's fine, they made it through thanks to them. The magical sphere in the room loses its power and begins to fade. Alice says that it seems that if this formation is not activated after it has accumulated energy, then it stops automatically. Isabella asks, does that mean they managed it? She takes Blair's hand and says it's great, they did it and saved the city. He felt severe pain and says that he is hurt and she should let him go. Suddenly the ceiling of the building begins to collapse. Alice says that she forgot to tell them something. Many ancient structures self-destruct so that enemies cannot take advantage of this. Isabella is surprised and asks if she said self-destruct. She doesn't let me finish and says that the formation could blow up this entire dungeon. A huge stone falls next to them. Blair is scared and says they should run away. Couldn't she just say they need to get out of here? The column collapses and begins to fall. Blair begins to run away and says goodbye to Ethan and Baird. People standing on the mountain notice that the barrier is disappearing. Someone runs very quickly next to the men. Brittany uses magic and flies towards the mountain. The man says she is so impatient. Austin says that the barrier is open, everyone must search the mountains, capture the criminals, and evacuate the students. The soldiers agree with him and he hopes that Isabella is okay. At the same time, three students escape from this collapsing dungeon. Isabella says that now everything will collapse, they must move back. The ceiling collapses and a large amount of smoke rises as the ceiling falls. She asks Blair where is he. He comes out of a cloud of dust and they notice him. Isabella comes up to him and asks if he got hit. He says no, his shoulder just still hurts. Alice says that everything is blocked here too, now they won't be able to get out. Blair looks at the stones and thinks that there are fewer stones here than at other exits. Maybe they can blow it up with magic. Isabella says that it won't work, a lot of fireballs will be needed here, their spiritual strength will not be enough for this. Blair says he has a plan. Didn't they study the fire shield technique? They need to try their best. The girls agree and he thinks about oxygen extraction and thinks that when the oxygen concentration in the air is from 4 to 75 percent, the ignition will intensify. It fires a powerful fire projectile that explodes violently. The girls put up a magical barrier that protects them. Blair says they succeeded. Isabella asks how he did it. Has he really already reached the level of a magician? Some time later, they begin to climb out through a hole in the ground. Alice gets out and is glad that they finally got out. She helps Isabella get out of there. Blair is breathing heavily due to his wounds. She holds out her hand to him and asks how he is feeling. He holds the wound in his stomach and says they don't have to worry, he's fine. He removes his hand and it is clear that a sharp stone is stuck in his wound. He thinks that he can't do it anymore because he's already at his limit. He jumps and reaches his hand up. He wonders if it's really him. At the last moment Brittany grabs his hand. He closes his eyes and sees her face. Some time later he wakes up in a hospital room. He tries to get up and wonders where he is. He's in a lot of pain. Isabella rubs her eyes and says he shouldn't move. Seeing that he woke up and was very happy about it, she joyfully shakes him and says that he has finally woken up. Blair says that he is in pain and if she continues to shake him, he will definitely die. Brittany says he was lucky, the wound was not fatal, but he lost a lot of blood. He needs to recover calmly, she will make sure that he is released from classes. Blair tells the teacher who Baird is for real. Brittany says that she has already listened to the girl's story, but it seems to her that it is not their responsibility to report this to the king. If he tells someone, then maybe. He says she's right, they can't do anything about it. Suddenly someone opens the door and it attracts their attention. Austin comes into the room and apologizes for disturbing him. He says his name and says that he is Isabella's father. She asks dad what is he doing here. Blair apologized to the head of the city and asked why he needed him. Austin bows and says that he saved his daughter in the city of Yabo. He came to thank him. He is incredibly grateful to him. Blair says he shouldn't bow to him. 
Austin says he has one more thing to do. He wants to invite him to the Clavius family's family dinner, which will take place tomorrow evening. Blair is surprised by this proposal. Isabella wonders if he was invited to dinner, meeting your parents. Together, she blushed and wondered, all together. Some time later, Blair tells Isabella that although he agreed to go to dinner, these clothes are very uncomfortable. She says that he constantly dresses in anything. Today her parents will be present for dinner, other families and important people will also come. Blair says it felt like a family dinner. Why are so many people coming? Isabella says their family dinners are always like this. He says that she is right because the title of head of the city is inherited by her family. It's no surprise that her family dinners are high society parties. He thinks and remembers that Isabella is the only daughter of the head of the city, which means that she will become the next head of the city. If he marries her, he will be able to do whatever he wants in the city of Yabo. An next child will later also become the head of the city. Only he will have to bear the surname Clavius in order to rule the city. He is not particularly conservative and does not mind if the child has his mother's surname. But still the surname Chen would suit him better. Unless they have two children, then one will be Clavius and the other Chen, that's great. Isabella grabs his ear and he asks why she is pulling his ears again. She says that he is again thinking about something terrible. He must say what is on his mind. Blair says she shouldn't scream, he was just thinking about having two babies. That is, this is not what he wanted to say, he has one friend, his wife is going to give birth, she will have twins. So they asked him to help come up with names. Isabella says that she understood, it just seemed to her that he was thinking. Although it doesn't matter. Did he come up with names for his friend's children? Blair says he hasn't come up with an idea yet. They want one child to have his mother's last name and the other to have his father's last name. They haven't agreed on this yet. Isabella asks, would he agree for his child to have his mother's surname? Blair says that if there were two born, he would agree. She says she understood him, he should think carefully about the names. They move on and reach the house. Isabella calls out to her mother as they approach the house. The woman turned around and said that the guy next to her must be her friend Blair. He bows and tells her, good evening. The woman says that she is grateful to him for saving her daughter. She often talked about him. Isabella gets angry and asks her mom that she didn't talk about it. The women next to them say that this young man saved her from the hands of the treacherous Baird. He's quite cute. Nowadays there are fewer and fewer young people with such courage and abilities. She never brought guys into the house. Are they really dating? They suit each other very well. Isabella grabs Blair's hand and tells her mom that she will take him to dad. A woman standing nearby asks why she was scared. They won't take him away. He asks her to run a little slower. Isabella says that they said so many stupid things, they need to leave. Austin asks, does that mean Walter is up to something? Abel says that's true, that's why he came to him. Austin says that the city of Yabo is the home of their Clavius family, and they have ruled it for several hundred years, and he thinks that some petty finance minister, Walter, can shake their power. Abel says that this used to be the case, but in recent years the capital has greatly tightened the rights of city leaders. Now the finances and military strength of all cities, including the city of Yabo, are leaving the control of the city leaders. The king sends his servants to manage finances and military power. This is what he knows. And the secretary of the exchequer, Walter, is also the queen's younger brother. He knows that every year at this time tax inspectors come from the capital. They have great power. If they find something wrong, they have the right to arrest even the head of the city. He knows information that Marquis Walter will come to the city of Yabo. And a few days ago they had a confidential conversation. Most likely they are plotting against him. Austin says he understands, he's grateful for the warning, he'll be careful. Abel gets up and says that then he doesn't dare bother him anymore, so they say goodbye. Austin asks him to wait and says that he wants to ask him something. Why did he tell him all this? Abel says he did this for the safety of his family. Howard will require some time for his family, but if something happens in the city of Yabo during this time, they will be trapped. After he left, Isabella knocks on the door and tells Dad that she and Blair have arrived. Abel notices this, and as he leaves he thinks that forever he appears where something is happening. He wishes him good luck. 